What's up, everybody? Welcome to PSI Love You XOXO, episode 58. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside He Only Does Everything, Colin Moriarty. It's good to be here with you today. It's good to be here with you today as well, Colin Moriarty. How have you been? I haven't talked to you oh, at all. I'm fantastic. Yeah? No, I mean, I've never been fantastic. Oh, in my life, but no, that's not No, true. things are good. Everything's fine. What have you been playing? Uh, not too, too much. Uh, a, I've been playing Civilization VI uh, primarily. You got it. Um, and uh, it's not on PlayStation. Is it good though? It's excellent. Excellent. Uh, it makes my lap. My I have an origin, very capable origin laptop right here that plays games just fine. Plays played. We played Battlefield One at like the highest settings on it. Yeah, it was, it was incredible. Yeah, yeah. I have Civ Six running at medium settings um, across the board. It makes my laptop run so hot. It is incredible. <laughs> I can only, I really only like I played for an hour or maybe ninety minutes at a time, and then I like shut it off. I'm like, I don't. This thing's gonna combust. Yeah. So uh, so that's an issue. But uh, have you blown? Have you used the compressed air? That's to what blow someone the told. That's what out. someone told me to do. But I don't have any compressed air. You go. You don't have it around the corner store. Go over there. Get some compressed what they, air. What are they? Compressed air from fucking 1987 at that you store. You know they do. You know they do. Yeah, they're gonna have it all um, set to go for you. Someone told me to do that. I don't know if it's gonna work, but yeah, there's some, something. What do you have to lose? Um, and then on, uh, I've been playing, messing around a little bit with Dragon Quest Builders on Vita. And how uh, far are you now? Not much further. You in chapter two? No, I'm in chapter two. I'm pretty deep. I'm about to beat it. I think it's because I was playing on the plane rides. Um. It's interesting. The I'm um, now we, we've been doing these ongoing impressions of Dragon Quest Builders. You and I. I'm saving, of course, for the road whenever I go. Trying not to play it at home. So uh, we, uh, you know, a lot of the Chapter One impressions. Mm. We talked about the fact of they uh, there's these challenges that are part of the trophies. But how would we know about them when we the chapter you get to see them? Whatever weird loading system. Sure, the Chapter Two's world is so much different than Chapter One in ter- terms of how I was talking about it being baby's first Minecraft in Chapter One. The difficulty starts to ramp up a bit in terms of like, well, now it's not as easy to find all these different things. You have to go this way. Mm. And do that thing interesting uh and then battlefield one i played uh quite a bit yeah um i'm really i'm playing it on hard and uh i'm looking for all of the field manuals and i'm doing all the challenges so yeah. i'm only so i'm taking my time and kind of backtracking a little bit um so i'm only done with the first vignette there are four of them i think or five um the game's excellent mm-hmm. and uh you know i i think the, the hallmark, the essence of Battlefield has always been the, the destructible environments, these these wide open environments that don't funnel you but give you options. That's all there. Uh, the first uh, mission or the first vignette I played was a British tank group that is in, in a tank called Bess and they're trying to basically get from point A to point B and so you play like five different chapters with them. And now as a quick aside, as somebody who hasn't <clears throat> jumped into single player beyond the, pro, the prologue to get us into play multiplayer <clears throat> so I had my feet wet. When you say you played the, the, the this first one yet, that's the it's not non-linear, right? You, everybody starts with this tank people, or do you get to pick where you start? Uh, Tim and I were talking about it. Like you can jump from story to story, so okay. I don't know. Okay. I, I started where the prompt put me. Like they're numbered, but it mm-hmm. seems like mm-hmm. you can jump to them. I don't know if that's necessarily played in order or not because the, what I'm playing, it's not spoilers because I don't know if you know World War One happened, <gasps> but the particular campaign you're fighting in in the in, the, in that first vignette yeah. takes place like a month before the war ends. So I don't I don't think uh, that okay. they're in any way like in any way on a timeline from 1914 to 1918 necessarily, but I could be wrong. Um, but w- what I like about it, what I want to get props to the gun plays f- great. The game's fun. Um, the technology is very impressive. Like these, you know, you really are. I mean, this has always been battlefields thing, but it they're really destroying these buildings. You really are fucking destroying shit. Yeah. And it really is kind of amazing to look back at what you've done uh, as you play through these big maps. But, um, the emotional resonance of this particular game is unlike I've ever seen in a, oh, in a, in a, a military shooter in terms of the story, in terms of connecting with the characters. Yeah. The, what I like about it is that the, the prologue of the game, you basically play as these guys until you're dead. Like you're, yeah. you're just supposed to die multiple yeah, times. Everybody's going to die. Here. But when you die in the campaign, like it just puts up like the date and says like you died today or whatever, like that particular character as if it, you know, it's not supposed to happen that way for this particular character. But the cutscenes are very emotional. The, the, I really felt, with Battlefield One, with this particular tank group, this just group of four guys, like a lot of emotion. It's really quite fascinating. Mm, you, f- mm. you feel a lot of fear, like for them, and and I like that this game really puts a lot of context into the games we play um, by making death. Uh, you know, you you die like in any other game, but the game slows down, and when you're dying, and you know it's These happening. Matter. They're yeah, not it's kind of like weighty. Reminds mm. me a little bit of The Last of Us in that way, where mm, mm. when you're killing guys and, and gals in that game, you you feel you're the very weight. aware that you're doing it. So it's uh, it's cool. I think people are really going to dig it. I think it's obviously the game to beat this fall. So we'll, well this see. is going to be the week you hang it up right and join me on the battlefields of Titanfall two. 
No. We get in our mechs. We run around in our titans. We're going to do something. Get the shotgun. I don't, I don't, get the boost. Climb over stuff. I can't fucking wait. My priority is is uh, things are going to start slowing down a little bit. We yeah. have The Last Guardian coming later and a few other sporadic games, but this is going to give me a little bit of time to kind of like figure out what I want to do. So I'd, I'd like to get through Battlefield. I'd like to jump back to Tomb Raider if mm-hmm. I can. I mean, this is mm-hmm. the plan. I don't know if this is going to happen. Or of course not. not. Something will pop up. Uh, this I'm this sure week. some other games will pop up. I want to spend a lot of time with Civ 6 because I really enjoy it. Um, and then somewhere in there, Call of Duty is going to be played. Sure. I don't know necessarily that I'm even going to get to Titanfall. Um, and I don't really care, to sure. be honest with you. So I, I be, I'm curious, but there are other games I'm more curious You can come about. watch me like you did last time. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's basically it, I think, for... Um, you know, I've been I've been like trucking very slowly through that game, Virginia, with Aaron. Oh, really? Still going very that? slowly, like very. What's your? Slowly. I've I've beaten Virginia. I enjoyed Virginia. What's your take on Virginia? So I don't far, have an you opinion go. on it. Yet. Yeah. No. You gonna go back and platinum it? I'll tell you what, because I was okay. I did platinum Job Simulator. Oh, and that's what I was looking for. Somebody asked a question about that. If you were gonna do it, because the trophies are easy. Apparently, they're they all golds. Uh, yeah, all golds. How much time do you have to sink in to do it? Um, I want to say it would take you no more than five hours. Yeah but maybe even less. Sure. Okay. You have to just beat the game, do everything in the game for all four types, job types, and then you have to just go back. Each each one has like a special thing like at the at the convenience store. You have to like scratch the scratch off tickets until you win at like uh, the... Um, what, what, what's another example? Something happens at the auto shop. Of course. Yeah. And something happens at the office. Like you have to take a statue and put it into the grinder and stuff like that. So uh, easy. Just time consuming. A little yeah, bit. it's not. It's not. It wasn't bad. It, uh, I did say that it was an unsatisfying platinum mm. in the sense that it was easy, which are usually unsatisfying platinums anyway. But um, just hearing the ding and not seeing the prompt. Yeah, I hate that shit. I'm kind of a little disappointing. Right, right, right. No, Virginia, I was enjoying playing through. It's a very interesting experience, a very different kind of game. It was, it, was, it's, it reminded me a bit in terms of me getting uh, the urge to go buy it in the same way I got the urge to go buy Gone Home, where it was strictly people saying, this game's awesome. Don't read stuff about it. Just go play it or whatever. And jumping in, I had no idea what I was getting into. Played it in two sittings just because I was tired the first time. And the more and more that game builds, I don't want to ruin it for people and things. It was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, this is really cool. This is interesting. What's it going to be? Where am I playing? What is the exact story we're getting? And then getting to the end, I wanted a spoiler cast. I tweeted out about it. I got some different links, looked at some videos, re- read some stuff. But then I was like, all right, cool. Now I'll go back and get the trophies because it was, you know, it's an easy platinum. And you go back and you look and it's like, it's one of those where I'm going to have to watch the, even reading the trophy roadmap. I'm like, okay. And then it was like, I'm going to have to watch the video. And I look at the video and it's an hour and a half. And looking at the hour and a half long video, I was like, I can't justify this. I can't. I don't want to be the guy sitting there hitting play, watching and like, all right, cool. And then coming back up and doing that and then hitting play. And I'm like, I don't want to do this. It's not worth it. Can't do it. Enjoy the game too much to put it through some kind of grinder like that. If you didn't know, PS I love you. XOXO is kind of funny.com's PlayStation podcast. It is the number one PlayStation podcast on the internet, and it posts every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific time on podcast services and youtube.com slash kind of funny games. So, Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go to kindoffunny.com. Subscribe to the other YouTube channel. Watch Love and Sex Stuff. If you see Kevin throw cupcakes at him, if you like us on iTunes, like us there and leave us little reviews. If you don't like us on iTunes, don't say a goddamn word. Just stop listening to the show and go away. Colin. Yes. Let's begin the show with what is and forever will be Roper's Report. (laughs) Time for some singular possessive news. There are 11 items on the list. A baker's dozen. Number one. The Last Guardian has officially gone gold and is ready for manufacture in anticipation of its release on December 6th. Initial word came by way of Sony producer Jun Yoshino, who tweeted out that the game was finished before deleting his tweet. However, Shuhei Yoshida followed it up with a tweet of his own stating the following, quote, I've waited a very long time to say this. The Last Guardian has gone gold. I'm so excited for all uh, for you all to finally experience it, end quote. For people that don't know, going gold means the game is basically done and ready for, for manufacture. Yeah, now they can go press distribution. Discs. Now, do you think the tweet was deleted because... Oh, no, I wasn't supposed to say that. Or because Shuhei was like, no, this is my moment. Get out of here. Probably the former. Well, You'd have to assume. I don't yeah. I don't think Shuhei would make someone delete a tweet so he can write the same thing. Well, you never he know. He could have Shuhei. just written it and he would have still gotten 10 times more pickup. You never know. Shuhei's crazy. So congratulations to Studio Japan. It only took you 10 years. I'm excited to play. I want to know what the, I want to know how it all ends. I want to know what the hell this game is going to be. I, I I'd be lying to you if I said I was excited about it, but I'm uh, but I'm I'm curious. Yeah, and I said it on Colin and Greg Live. My prediction: five hours. Um, and uh, I suspect will resonate with a group of people and disappoint. A Your vast Caleb Lawson. Yeah, it'll resonate with your Caleb. Lawson. I just don't think it can live up to any sort of expectation. I feel this is this is almost gospel, but we'll see. What happens? I don't know. I've sure. not gone hands on with it at all. 
Number two. As predicted, Rockstar did indeed announce the new Red Dead game. The third game in the Red Dead series is Red Dead Redemption 2, which when looking at the trailer, the title and more seems to indicate that it's either a prequel or a sequel to Red Dead Redemption. The game is set for launch on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, no PC, in the fall of 2017, meaning we have to wait a whole year for the game. Rockstar's brief press release says the following, quote, an epic... Ooh, a little burp coming up there. It uh, said that in the press release? Nope, that's just me. Quote, oh. an epic tale of life in America's unforgiving heartland. The game's vast and atmospheric world will also provide the foundation for a brand new online multiplayer experience, end quote. Additionally, Sony has confirmed that it's worked out some sort of special arrangement with Rockstar that will net PS4 gamers some content early if they play Red Dead Redemption 2 on PlayStation 4. On the PlayStation blog, Sony wrote, quote, we are pleased to announce that PS4 players get first access to earn select online content and the vast open world of Red Dead Redemption 2, end quote. That's all we know for now. Uh, important to note, too, uh, and this is an interesting wrinkle, commercials for the game played during Mon- uh, Sunday Night Football and during Walking Dead, yeah. um, which I think is strange. They're crazy. They want to sell more than GTA somehow. <laughs> Booty Pop 88 says, what's crack a lack in Colin and Greg? I was curious of what you guys think of having seven playable characters in Red Dead Redemption 2. I know you guys have said you would prefer just one character and a more focused story. I know I freaked the fuck out when they announced three characters for GTA 5, but that turned out fucking awesome. So do you think they could hit gold again with Red Dead Redemption 2? Thanks, Dustin. P.S. I am lovable. Did we, in the end, love the three characters of GTA 5? I loved GTA 5. I had a great time with GTA 5. I totally feel more connected to my silent protagonist of GTA 3, uh, my um, 80s guy, Ray Liotta, whose name I uh, suddenly... Vincent? No, somebody... Well, not whatever. I don't remember. It's uh, been literally Ray 13 Liotta. years since I played that game. And then CJ. I liked I liked having... I still like having one character, one protagonist, and one thing. I think Red Dead was... Or, I'm sorry. GTA 5 was fun and different, and I loved Trevor, and I loved Michael, but at no point was I like super invested. I felt really in those characters, let alone when like Trevor's a total psychopath and a rapist and all these different things. Um, in terms of seven playable characters for Red Dead 2, God, no, please don't do that. Please, under no circumstance, make all seven playable. Please, God, no. Yeah, I don't think they would do that. It would be interesting to see a little like, a Battlefield 1 we were just talking about a little bit yet. Yeah. But I don't necessarily think that that's necessary. Or but what I loved about Red Dead Redemption period was being John and going out into the woods and getting all these pellets and and like feeling RPG ish of going through and doing these different things and making a story around it and making a legacy around that. I don't, I don't, I don't like being broken out of the game. Like I was in GTA five and shot over here and gone down here, Mm. nor do I think I'd want to be vignettes necessarily when Mm. I, I, that's an open world. I want to exist in that world. Mm. I want to make changes. I want to kill people and have that resonate and matter and do these different things. No, you want to kill people for sure. I want to kill people and man, We'll see. Top of the list, Tim Gettys. Debating what it is 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 who who knows at this point. It's not even really worth doing. Sure, I think seven playable characters is too much. It'd be interesting to see if they bring some of that I agree. St- multiplayer stuff into it. Though. I agree. Uh, Los Cry says hi, Colin and Greg. Big fan from Cuba. We welcome your imports for the first time in a long really? time. Really from Cuba? Interesting. Yeah. My question is simple. With the news of Red Dead Redemption 2 confirmed for fall 2017, do you think there is a possibility of a Red Dead Redemption 1 HD coming to the PlayStation 4? I would like to hear your thoughts about it. Keep up the great work. Blah, 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 blah. And if you ever find yourself in Miami, it would be a pleasure to buy you guys a drink. It's a uh, doubtful. I, Red Dead Redemption uh, is available on PlayStation now, I think, and I yep. think that that's it's going, going to be or is it about will to be. be. Yeah, it's about to be. And I think that's going to be a resolution. I, I assume that you know there's not an impetus for them to do it, especially on Xbox One, because it is already backwards compatible yeah. with Xbox One from Xbox 360. So then putting all those resources into one port um, for PS4 seems a little silly. Also, Rockstar does not have any legacy of doing that with their games, so um, there are no HD collections for you know they they re-release like Grand Theft Auto the trilogy, the PS2 like classics, like PS2 and, classics and and the PSP games are playable on Vita or whatever like but they don't they don't really seem to go through jump through hoops although they did recertify them um, to get trophies on GTA 3 Vice City and San Andreas and then Bully and uh, the Warriors and shit so they, they are going down that road in a way but not, not GTA 5 of, yeah. was like you know the tipping point between generations so that's why I probably saw one a, a next gen and old gen version but yeah I'm with you I just, I just don't think you're talking about one platform where it really matters and counts now unless they wanted to put together a definitive edition but then the ball would have been in motion I think you would have seen the dual announcement of that get now you know get the re-released HD crazy definitive edition of Red Dead and also get the beta for Red Dead Redemption 2 or some crap yeah, well like they could have done what, what Ubisoft did with South Park where they you got or with what what uh, Activision with Call of Duty Modern Warfare where you get that game for pre-ordering the sure. new game and that's the only way you can get it or whatever but they didn't do that number three some new interesting details about PlayStation 4 Pro have emerged 
For starters, the new PlayStation 4 will contain one extra gigabyte of RAM, according to IGN. Quote, we felt games needed a little more memory, about 10% more, so we added about one gigabyte of slow conventional DRAM to the console, end quote, Sony's Mark Cerny, uh, Sony's Mark Cerny told the website. This memory will be used for non-gaming purposes, apparently, freeing up some of the console's core RAM for other purposes. In addition, GameSpot confirms that PlayStation 4 Pro will come with a swappable hard drive, just like PlayStation 3 and the original PlayStation 4 before it. So little tidbits leaking out in uh, anticipation of its November release. Bart2546 wrote into kindoffunny.com slash PSQ, just like you can, to get your question read on PS I Love UXO, and says, Oi, governess! I wanted to try this one again. I'm a physical media kind of guy and avoid downloaded games whenever possible. You're wrong. I don't mind that the PlayStation 4 Pro doesn't have a a UHD Blu-ray drive. However, do you think that because of this, the Pro will be unable to play 4K games from a disc and therefore limit 4K gaming to streaming slash download only, just like the video content? I don't know enough to have the answer to that question. That's why we usually dodge PlayStation Pro questions because we're not Scott Lowe, the tech tower. However, no, I, I mean, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, no, I don't think you have to worry about that. I understand what you're talking about with the video content, but when you're talking about a video game machine that's touting 4K, I don't think they'd be stupid enough to paint themselves in a corner where the disc-based stuff can't do it. But again, we're not those guys. Number four, United Front Games, the independent Canadian studio best known for sleeping dogs, has officially closed down. The studio had a special connection to the heritage of PlayStation last generation as before launching Sleeping Dogs, the studio created Mod Nation Racers and yep. Little Big Planet Karting, yep. which were both no. PS3 exclusives. Yep. We wish nothing but the very best to all those who were affected by the closure and hope everyone lands on their feet soon. As I said uh, on Colin and Greg when this was announced, or this news wasn't really announced, but just kind of came forward. This is an independent studio in British Columbia. I've uh, been around for a while. I feel like Square Enix is partially responsible for this. Um Square Enix, of course, funded Sleeping Dogs. Sleeping Dogs ended up being a critical hit, and I think commercially did pretty well. They re, they the, relaunched it on the new consoles, and they should have collection again. And they should have made uh, a sequel, a direct sequel. Instead, they made Triad Wars, which was this tryhard MMO that clearly was going to fail. Uh, it was a stupid fucking move. I think it ruined the studio. But of course, that's just an absolute conjecture. I don't have any insight into that. I haven't even spoken to anyone at United Front Games in three years, probably. Yeah, since they were on so some, I think the two or four for Sleeping Dogs. Yeah, because yeah, we went out to lunch with them. Yeah. And they're very nice guys. Great folks. But uh, so I feel a little disappointed in that. They were working on a uh, game called Smash and Grab, I think, which was on Steam Early Access, which I think was taken down. Um, the right move for them would have done the safe thing, which was Sleeping Dogs 2, which would have been out by now, probably. Or so. the safer thing in Mod Nation Racers 2 and cut down the load times oh, and be the definitive would've. cart racer that of all time. That would have been a very safe thing. Because that's what Mod Nation Racers was on the way to being, ladies and gentlemen. Load time sucked, sure. But the play create share of cart racing, same magnifique. So who knows who is ultimately responsible for this, but I can't help but wonder if Triad Wars was the massive misstep and that was seemed to have been a Square Enix thing, right? And that's always the dangerous thing when you start talking about being an independent studio or a studio of anyone where you get into bed and you put a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of resources into a project that is something different. Like when this M- Triad Wars MMO is super weird and a little, bl- I mean, to the point, Little Big Planet Carding was a failure too. I mean, critically and I mean, commercially, obviously as well. But yeah, I can't imagine how few copies that sold. Exactly. And so, I mean, like, <clears throat> but I, that obviously they get their paycheck from Sony, but then maybe just, you know, is Sony not working with them anymore? Is the contract work dry up there? They feel like they have to do this thing. They have to go this way, hoping that they make enough money than this and have enough interest in the Sleeping Dog universe to get to Sleeping Dogs too. And I'm not sure. I, I suspect that they were doing contract work up until the end. So it doesn't obviously bode super well for full independence. Like you don't see Insomniac, I don't think, doing contract work. for Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Number five. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with contract work. That's how you make money in the industry when you're coming up. But it speaks to a level of stability. Play game dev story. It's all about that. Number five. The MPD group has revealed the top 10 best-selling games across both retail and digital channels in the United States for the month of September 2016, and it appears sports games are all the rage. Oh! The best-selling games were in order. NBA 2K17, Madden NFL 17, FIFA 17, NHL 17, Bioshock The Collection, Destiny The Collection, Grand Theft Auto 5, Overwatch, Forza Horizon 3, and Call of Duty Black Ops 3. It's worth noting that Overwatch and Forza Horizon 3 contain incomplete data, with Overwatch lacking Battle.net uh, sales and Forza Horizon 3 lacking all digital sales, so it's safe to assume both games would have charted higher. As a reminder, Xbox One outsold PS4 for the month for the third consecutive cycle. A lot of brand new non-sports games on that list. Yeah, I mean... What I was most interested in was Bioshock outselling Destiny. Yeah. But everyone has Destiny. Exactly. And that's just the collection too, right? That's them yeah. their attempt to rebundle it and get you in if you hadn't gotten in yet. Heartened by the Bioshock sales though. Yeah. I still think we're going to get Bioshock 3. Number six. I'm sure you're going to get Bioshock 3. 2K not going to let go of that. And by, we know there are three Bioshock games, but I mean Bioshock 3. 
Number six, will The Order 1886 ever get a sequel? The PlayStation 4 exclusive third person shooter launched in early 2015 to a tepid critical response, but developer Ready at Dawn thinks the franchise could, and by the sound of it, should go on. In a conversation with Game Informer, as distilled by GameSpot, Ready at Dawn's creative director, a friend of ours, Rue Weir, I always forget, fuck this up, Rue Weir Asuria, said, call quote, Is there a future? Yes, that IP has a future. It's definitely built in that IP. That future is already something that was built from the very get-go, from the first day we started working on it. As you know, since you played the game and for the ones who played out there, there is a larger storyline. There is a macro story that keeps going. It's an IP that is actually bigger than the storylines we have created, so there are legs to this IP, definitely. Ellipsis. We feel that the order showcased the fruits of our labor on technology. That was one of the biggest focuses for the team having come from PSP and jumping directly to PS4. The first game was more than anything a launch platform to build upon. The order was never written as a one-off story. There is a lot more to tell, as you can see by the way the game ends. Um, unfortunately, I think that he says everything here in terms of we feel the order showcased the fruits of our labor on technology. That was one of the biggest focuses for the team. Mm -hmm. I know. And that's the, pro that's the and that's problem. problem. There's no hard because soul under there is a five hour game that should have been 10 hours. And that would have made all the difference because I don't think the game played badly. And I don't think the game was uninspired. The story and the setting were great. Really, really great. But there's not enough there. And it just becomes vanilla. The back end systems are not exciting enough. The trophy systems uninspired. There's not enough there, and the game does end in a very tantalizing way. And people have been asking me, the game was on sale for like seven bucks or something like that recently. Yeah. And they're like, is it worth it at that? I'm like, yes, absolutely. I think if you get to get the order for under $20, definitely worth it. Necro Ambulant wrote in to kindoffunny.com slash PSQ, just like you can. It says, hey, Greg and Colin, this past week, Game Informer conducted an interview with the leads of Ready at Dawn, who addressed the issues the Order 1886 had and mentioned they are sure that the Order IP will live on in the future. Now that Sony owns that IP, and if Sony chooses to do a sequel, what studio do you think Sony would let handle that IP? I would like to personally see it go to Naughty Dog to do a sequel, but at the moment, their plate seems full. Before E3, everyone was so sure that Sucker Punch was going to be doing a Spider-Man game, but now it is unclear on what they are doing. Would just like to hear your guys' opinion on what the Order's future is, if any. Keep up the great work, Alex. I personally will like to see Ready at Dawn get another crack yeah, at me it. Yeah, me too. Ready at Dawn is an incredibly talented studio. Those God of War games on the PSP are great. They made me a God of War fan, actually, because I just I'd never connected with the PS2 versions for some reason. Um... I like those guys. Like you said, they're friends of ours. We know them. We've talked to them. Uh, I've known them we for just years, saw them, We just saw them at Games, uh, GameStop. They came Expo. by and showed their new multiplayer game of theirs. Deformers. Deformers, right. I uh, played that, and that's fun. Totally different for them. But this is one of those things where they have the tech now. They understand what people want and what they don't want. And I think that if you were able to... They have the engine set up. Let's go for it. Let's go. Let, let them go back and have another crack at this and see what they can do. Because they're a studio that deserves to have their own IP that matters to a wide audience, right? Because it was for a while. All right, we're going to do God of War. We're going to mm. do Daxter. We're going to work on other people's projects. It's like, all right, well, let's, let's make something that's your own. Let's make your own home here. Yeah, I agree. I would like them to get another crack. I suspect that they might. Yeah. Um, and... I don't know. I mean, I've, I've heard, I mean, you read things every once in a while, or hear things that ready, well, that the order actually sold pretty well and maybe made its money back. Um, so I just feel like that way, uh, a part of, uh, so it, it, it's complicated because I think it's a shame the way that game came out. I think that that game wasn't well served. I think it was clear that it wasn't going to be good. Um, and I was, you know, and I'm proud of myself for sounding the clacks on that very early. And a lot of people gave me a lot of shit for that until the game came out. Mm. And then they all realized that I was right. Um, and what I agree with you, they're nice guys and they're talented and they have they have the chops. I think they just focused on the wrong things. And so they have the engine. They have the characters, the world, presumably ten, tons of assets. Um, so write the game and make it and make it a 10 to 12 hour game. I don't need multiplayer. Have some interesting back end upgrade systems and all these kinds of things. Make the game a little meatier. Give it a little more replay value and set it on the world. The order 1887. Yeah. You know, like I I would like to see that and I don't think anyone else should handle it and I don't think anyone else will handle it. But the, the thing about it is I think I'd like to see what they bring to the sequel knowing what they screwed up with the original because yeah when you say Sucker Punch Sucker Punch is where they leave the story inside the order right with him you know Big G staring out over the city ready to go out fuck up some dick wolves and all these other people very interesting that would work as an open world game of him running around doing that but that's inherently no longer the order anymore and so i'd rather see what the order is supposed to be rather than see it given to a new studio to see them reboot it and do everything i'd yeah, like to see that need, assassin's creed one to assassin's creed two jump i don't need to see an open world in that it's, it's, it reminds me of the last of us give, you can give us these expansive environments if you yeah. want give us options in which to handle the combat um but when i think back on playing the order 1887 i was like there, there's something seriously wrong with this game but 86. but it's all or 1886 but there's something seriously wrong with it but 
I'd like to see more. It's one of those rare kind of things. Yeah. Number seven. It looks like Machine Games is indeed working on a new Wolfenstein game, at least according to another tantalizing rumor. As you may remember, something called the New Colossus was briefly teased inside a trailer for a different game at Bethesda's E3 conference. This was in the uh, DOS prompts. Yep, when it was starting up. Uh, and the DOS prompt, the reason that, for people that need context, the reason that it's it, it seems to point to the Wolfenstein is that it's basically id's games from Commander Keen all the way down, and it has the New Order and the Old Blood, which was the, the last Wolfenstein game in the DLC, and then it said the New Colossus. Um, and it says... Uh, GameSpot dug up an interview with Two Left Sticks conducted with voice actor Brian Bloom, who plays Wolfenstein protagonist BJ Blazkowicz. There, he said, quote, if you look at Bethesda's E3 2016 lineup, there was a t title hinted at in a cool way. It sparked a bit of wildfire, that subtle, very simple DOS language going through the, the titles. Perhaps we're working on that as we speak. And Just quote, tell us, Bloom. New Colossus likely refers to the Emma Lazarus sonnet that appears in the Statue of Liberty, something alluded to by BJ Blazkowicz at the end of Wolfenstein, the New Order. Almost certainly the next one. Yeah. Um... And it should be clear out before Machine Games make Wolf, makes Wolfenstein, so it's not only showing id games, but id properties, since Wolfenstein was an id property in the early 90s, in case you needed a little history context. lesson. Number eight. Sounds like Square Enix is pleased with the Western reception of recent Dragon Quest titles and intends to continue to publish them outside of Japan. MCV interviewed Noriyoshi Fujimoto, the series producer, about this and other things related to Dragon Quest. Fujimoto said that while Dragon Quest isn't well known in the West as it is in Japan, it's important to the history of the gaming industry and newcomers, quote, may be surprised to the sheer breadth of the universe in terms of variety and depth, end quote. As such, Square Enix is, quote, committed to bringing more Dragon Quest titles in the, in the West, end quote, with the belief that the games will continue to succeed more and more. Dragon Quest builders just launched in the West on PS4 and Vita. Dragon Quest Heroes launched on PS4 last year, and Dragon Quest XI is coming for PS4 sometime in the future. Um, Are you stoked about XI? Oh, I'm fucking super stoked about XI. XI is, is going to be a PS4, Switch, and 3DS game. Yes, yeah, Switch. Which indicates to me that it's got to be soonish since 3DS is going to wane and die very quickly um, in Switch's uh, shadow, similar to how GBA died in DS's shadow. Uh, interesting thing about Dragon Quest Builders, interesting wrinkle, Dragon Quest Builders sold a half a million copies in like a few days in Japan. So... Good. You're gonna get a sequel to that game. Dragon Quest Heroes has a sequel as well. So you're gonna they're gonna they're really ramping it up. And I think it's a smart universe to explore. The ironic thing about it is that it's all about iconography. It's similar to Zelda, actually, with the uh, Zelda Musou on mm -hmm. Wii U. Mm -hmm. These these Musos that are outside of Dynasty Warriors or Samurai Warriors or whatever are all about iconography and very little about story. Dragon Quest and Zelda have nothing like the stories are fucking stupid. It's really about Oh, the moon's gonna crash in the earth. It's real well, that's true. But it's really about the the, the monsters, the weapons, the lore like the continuous lore from the beginning to the end. Um, and it's kind of funny that that resonates more than something that could be story driven in that universe that might resonate just as well. Like what if it was final fantasy builders, you know, um, just some food for thought, but I'm, I'm super, I've been a dragon quest fan a long time and I'm really excited that people are, are getting into it. Uh, you know, recently better late than never. Yeah. You know, if you weren't around in the dragon warrior days, you can fuck you're yourself. A poser, but. Yeah. 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 No big deal. Will Dragon Quest Eleven have the building mechanics I like so much? No. Guarantee you won't. Number nine. I don't think you'll like Dragon Quest Eleven. Number nine. Will I get purple goo from fighting the octopus men? No. But you'll fight the octopus now. Number nine. When it comes to mod support, both Skyrim Special Edition and Fallout 4 are being given less storage space to work with on PlayStation 4 compared to Xbox One. What a surprise. Bethesda has confirmed that game mods can only take a gig of space on PS4 five times lower than Xbox One's five gig threshold. Likewise, Fallout 4 mods can only take 900 megs of space on PS4 <sighs> while being allotted two gigs on Xbox One. I'm sure this won't end incredibly poorly with the game self-destructing on the PlayStation platforms. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Number 10. I thought this was just an interesting piece of... I don't know. You'll, you'll see. Number, two, number 10. When Titanfall 2 launches for PlayStation 4 on October 28th, it will come packing PS4 Pro functionality directly on the disc, which is, to our knowledge, the first game confirmed to do so. Word comes by way of the game's producer, Drew McCoy, who confirmed the news on Twitter to an inquiring gamer asking about potential pro support. So as far as I know, uh, I don't know of any other game that has pro support endemic to the disc. Mm, Patches. Because um, Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider does, but I don't know if it's disc native or if there's going to be a patch. Interesting wrinkle. Yeah. Number 11. Wrap up. Hard Driven Amnesia Collection is coming to PlayStation 4 at an undetermined time in the future. VR shooter Lethal VR is coming to PlayStation VR at an undetermined time in the future. Suda 51's The Silver Case, which people are super excited about, is coming to PlayStation 4 in early 2017 by the way of NIS. Quirky Discovery Game Small Radios Big Televisions is coming to PlayStation 4 on November 8th. 
And finally, Shooter Slash Platformer Seraph is coming to PlayStation 4 on November 1st. And that is it for the news. Colin, you know that I love a good VR shooter, which Lethal VR on PlayStation VR sounds like it might be. But it's so far away. If I wanted to know what came to the digital and physical mom and grop shops this week, where would I go? You go to the official upcoming list of our official list of upcoming PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, PlayStation Vita, PlayStation VR, sometimes PSP software by the kind of funny co-founder. <laughs> buckle in because we got a lot of games starting with Big Buckle in. Big Buck Hunter Arcade comes to PlayStation 4 digital. Big Buck Hunter will bring the arcade experience to your living room with a fast-paced, addictive arcade shooter. The all-new control and aim mechanics will make this a must-pick-up-and-play arcade shooter experience. Travel around the globe and take down Wild Game and Whitetail and Moose Adventures or try your aiming and speed skills and epic bonus challenges. Don't this, mind if I don't. If this is a PlayStation VR game, I might do it. Get in there. That's what I was, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Try to hug the deer. Carnival Games VR comes to PlayStation VR. It's digital. It's out the 28th, so this is a 5, 6, 7 Thursday release. Carnival Games VR brings an immersive virtual reality experience, allowing you to explore the park, interact with patrons, and play up to 12 different games. Enter a themed carnival alley where you can play a game and earn tickets for virtual prizes or unlock another game. Bad English. I'd love to unlock another game inside of this game. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 comes to PlayStation 4, digital and retail. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 gives players the ultimate Dragon Ball gaming experience. Develop your own warrior, create the perfect avatar, train to learn new skills, and help fight new enemies to restore the original story of the Dragon Ball series. Can't wait. Got to restore that story yeah, in no, Dragon Ball when he's uh, not beating Superman. Goku Oh, the sucks. 20th is a Friday. I'm sorry. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition comes to PlayStation 4 digital and retail. This is out on the 20th, which is a Friday. Winner of more than 200 Game of the Year awards. Skyrim Special Edition brings the epic fantasy to life in stunning detail. The, the Special Edition includes the critically acclaimed game and add-ons with all new features like remastered art and effects, volumetric god rays, which I've been waiting Oof. forever for. I love all the no what the God fuck that Dynamic depth of field, screen space reflections, and more. I feel like that's all made up. <laughs> yeah, our game's got screen space reflections. You know how it is. You got and, your god uh, volumetric stuff. god rays. Yeah, of course. I'm like, oh, sign me up. Here's definitely. sixty bucks. Exiles End comes to PlayStation Four and Vita digital. When the scion of the most powerful corporation in the galaxy goes missing on a remote mining planet, a team of mercenaries is dispatched to investigate. Among them is Jameson, an old soldier with a dark past. Inspired by early 90s cinematic platformers, Exiles End plays out as an exploration-driven side-scrolling adventure through a massive mining complex on a moody, lonely, alien world. Sounds interesting. Adventure game, yeah. Farming Simulator 17 comes to PlayStation 4, digital and retail. Take on the role of a modern farmer in Farming Simulator 17. Immerse yourself in a huge open world loaded with a harvest of new content. Explore farming possibilities over hundreds of acres of land, including a detailed new North American environment. That's what it's all about. You got to have that detailed new North Now get ready American for virus. this one. Get ready for this next yeah, one. Yeah, I'm ready. Forestry 2017, the simulation comes to someone, PlayStation 4 Digital. Someone tweeted this at me, excited for your re reading of this write-up. It's out digital. It's a 28th release, so it's a Friday. Forestry 2017, the simulation takes you to the forest. Take over the tasks of a professional woodcutter and enjoy working in the woods. Control huge machinery, fell the trees, arrange the timber, and comb through your wood. Sell the wood and earn money to expand your company. <laughs> oh my god. Sounds great. Sounds fucking terrible. It sounds simpler than Farming Simulator. Farming Simulator always sounded interesting. It's I supposed to be the same. Group, oh yeah, 100%. Right? Like, it's the exact same logo. I got what I wanted. I got the. I got a code for Farming Simulator years ago. You remember there's a Let's Play up on Kind of Funny. And man, that game was complicated as hell. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. This one sounds easy. Chop down the tree, chop it into smaller pieces, sell it to the people. What could go wrong? Buy more trees. Do I have to plant the trees? No. Do I have to irrigate them? No. I'm all right. Ginger Beyond the Crystal comes to PlayStation nope. 4 Digital. No. Nope. Says a world destroyed by a crystal explosion, oh, a mysterious Jesus. threat hanging over its inhabitants, and a goddess who creates a hero. This is Ginger Beyond the Crystal. No. Ginger must reestablish the connection with the goddess by purifying corrupted crystals that have spread throughout the worlds. It won't be easy. The worlds are full of enemies and traps across 15 different levels. Come on with that name. Ginger? The uh -huh. fuck? Infinite Air with Mark McMorris comes to PlayStation 4 digital and retail. Mark McMorris Infinite Air is a fresh welcome into snowboarding for newcomers and a challenging step into untracked territory for seasoned boarders. Get ready to shred custom-built runs and show off gnarly tricks across vast personalized terrain parks and 100 plus square miles of backcountry. No. Scrolling down. Won't be doing that one. Just Dance 2017 comes to PS4 and PS3 digital and retail. Just Dance 2017 is more fun and easier to play than ever. Shake your hips and wave your hands with the Just Dance controller app. If you have a smartphone, you don't need PlayStation Move or camera. Or camera. 
Kairanaga's Revenge comes to PlayStation 4 Digital. Kairanaga's Revenge is a 2D-based game with lots of platforming action puzzles. Battle alongside our two heroes, the samurai Koyuru Tamanegi and the street fighter Broccoli Joe. Broccoli Joe! All across feudal Japan in their new adventure. Bro- Broccoli Joe. That fighter's good. Lithium Inmate 39 comes to PlayStation 4 Digital. Lithium Inmate 39 is a horrifying puzzler. It tells the story of a psychiatric patient who must find his way back to his origins, discovering his past and uncovering the secrets buried within his mind. Oh. Minecraft Story Mode, the complete adventure, comes to PlayStation 4 Retail. Prepare for the adventure of a lifetime. As Jesse, you'll embark on a perilous adventure across the overworld, through the nether to the end and beyond. While at Endercon, in hopes of meeting Gabriel the Warrior, you and your friends discover that something is wrong. Something dreadful. That's as far as I play. That's episode one. Sounds thrilling. Monster Jam Crush It comes to PlayStation 4 Digital. Crush It takes fans back into authentic real-life stadiums for racing and freestyle events, including the site of Monster Jam World Finals, Sam Boyd Stadium. Choose your, offici- you forget choose your favorite Stadium. official Monster Jam trucks, such as Grave Digger, Max D, Monster Mutt, and many more. I had a Grave Digger poster on my wall. Oh, yeah, you 80s. did. I went and saw them at Nassau Coliseum. Is Bigfoot still kicking around, or is it just Grave Digger now? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Don't know anything about it. Don't, I remember that it was really loud. That's all I remember. Oh, yeah. It was definitely terrifying loud for sure. And I was also curious how the Islanders could possibly play there when there's dirt all over the place. Did they have the dragon one yet? Have you seen the one that transforms into the dragon and then, like picks up other cars and like shoots fire out of its nose? The real thing. I mean, that's all it does. It can't eat them or anything. Don't really understand the fascination with it. Oh, Appreciate my aunt bringing me though. Remember, you go there, you get the exhaust kicked up. You, you're not getting pure oxygen anymore. Yeah. You're getting high as hell as watching That's these true. trucks run things over. Nobunaga's ambition, Sphere of Influence Ascension, comes to PlayStation 4 Digital and Retail. The newest release from the historical simulation game landmark series, Nobunaga's Ambition. Experience the reality of officer life in the Warring States period and watch it with your own eyes the fighting that brought the end of an era. I will witness it with my own eyes. Party Golf comes to PlayStation 4 Digital. It's out the 26th, so that is a Wednesday release. Tee off simultaneously to a psychedelic 2D world with satisfying simple physics, except it's a frenetic free-for-all to get in the hole. That's Yikes. I mean, that's just normal. It's instant fun with endless variety. There are trillions of gameplay combinations, from giant banana balls to turbo power-ups. The number of ways to play is practically endless. Trillions, huh? Trillions, man. Did you ever play the 100-foot robot golf? It's supposed to be terrible. Oh, yeah? No. But... Yeah, it was I one of those we got our codes, but it was during the glut of Let's VR see. games. I haven't, I haven't gotten it, jumped into it. One hundred foot robot golf Metacritic. Fifty four. No, okay. That's scores a shame. ranging from hardcore gamer gave it an eighty. The, the the biggest website you would actually ever heard about here is PlayStation Lifestyle gave it a seventy five, and then IGN gave it a fifty. Destructo gave it a forty. Gamespot gave it a fifty. Gotcha. Not surprising, I guess. Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter, comes to PlayStation 4. Well, there's a big bias against golf in the industry, let alone the bias against 100-feet robots. That's true. There's a huge bigotry against the 100-foot robot race. Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter, comes to PlayStation 4 Digital and Retail. Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter, is a fantastic adventure with unique gameplay that blends investigation, action, and exploration for an extraordinary experience that will test the limits of your nerves and intelligence. Track down evil in the darkest corners of London and the human soul while playing as the great detective as you untangle a web of intrigue, leading to the final stunning revelation. That Sherlock Holmes is the devil's daughter. You thought you were looking for the devil's daughter, but no, sir. So deep, man. Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> we wrote this description in game when we were on acid. Snow comes to PlayStation 4 Digital. Snow is the only free-to-play open-world winter sports game. So it's got to be the best. Explore a massive mountain. Customize your character with clothing and equipment from the biggest brands and compete in events to be the best. That uh, image uh, certainly uh, looks like a PlayStation 2 game. So I don't know if... A snowboarder like this? No textures. And then just snow written over it. <laughs> Spider, Right of the Shrouded Moon, comes to PlayStation 4 and Vita. Hey! Digital, cross by. You are a spider on the hunt, spinning webs to trap your prey. Explore an abandoned mansion, discover hidden passages, and leave the place covered in cobwebs. Unravel the story of the family who once lived at Blackbird Estate and solve puzzles left behind by a mysterious secret society. But you're a spider. Why would you want to solve this? Sounds those interesting. Puzzles? Well, I'm like I'm like this I'm like Charlotte's web spider, but I don't have like a girl and a pig to talk to. I'm just caught in this house. So I gotta do something because yeah, I'm gonna die soon. Yeah. I gotta have my babies. I shit out my babies. Then they get caught in the breeze and they go away. And then I make the pig grow. <laughs> that sounds about that sounds like the story. Tethered <laughs> comes to PlayStation VR digital. In a magical skyborne world, take on the role of a powerful spirit guardian charged with restoring life and balance. Command the peeps, your loyal servants, to fight, feed, build, and sacrifice themselves for the greater good in a quest to release your ent- entombed brethren. <laughs> the pig cries. <laughs> Titanfall 2 comes to PlayStation 4 digital and retail. It's out on the 28th, which is a Friday. 
In single player, an aspiring pilot and a veteran Titan combine forces to save their own lives and com combat a powerful enemy against all odds. Multiplayer offers brand new Titans, expanded pilot abilities, and deeper customization to elevate the fast paced and exciting gameplay fans expect from the series. Mm -hmm. Weeping Doll comes to PlayStation VR digital, and it's out on the 27th, which is a Thursday. Horrifying. Please tell me it's just a doll in a chair An crying. ordinary family, a beautiful home, but who's crying? Search the home, scour every room, <laughs> and scrutinize over every detail to piece together the story that has been kept locked away. That's a fucking creepy-ass image. But who's crying? I'm John Quinones. Yeah, I know, I was going to say, you said it like John Quinones. <laughs> Wick PlayStation 4 Digital out the 27th, which is a Thursday. Wick is a survival horror game where ghost stories are brought to life. Explore a local legend about the long lost children the in the woods who can still be seen, but only by those who dare to enter alone by candlelight. Okay. Windlands VR, Windlands VR comes to PlayStation VR Digital, a first person grappling hook explore exploration game. Soar through the ruins of a fallen world and discover the secrets of the ancients. Windlands or Windlands has been developed primarily for virtual reality headsets, but is also a great experience for those without headsets. It doesn't say that, though. It says PSVR only. Well, then not, maybe not a great experience. I mean, it doesn't say PSVR only, but it only says PSVR. I wouldn't trust it. <clears throat> we, we're not done yet. World Does of it? Final Fantasy Jeez. comes to PlayStation 4 and PS Vita, digital and retail. Now, this is the chibis. Embark on an adventure unlike any before to an all-new world of Final Fantasy with charming stylized visuals for both the young and the young at heart. Players will capture, customize, and evolve iconic monsters by stacking them to form adorable yet strategic monster towers. You excited for that one? Yeah. Yeah. I asked for a code two weeks ago. They, they reached out. They're like, you want it? I'm like, yeah. And that was the end of that. <laughs> we're cool. We're just checking. Yoma Ch keep talking shit, Moriarty. <laughs> and <Exactly>. finally, <laughs> Yomawari Night Alone comes to Vita Digital. A young girl walks her dog at dusk when an accident occurs. After coming home, the girl's sister runs into the night to find the dog. Neither returns. Now you must help the girl brave the town in the dead of night and to find her missing loved ones. NIS sent me this today. I'll be interested to see what it's all about. Um, and that is it for the games. Finally. Now, Co. Mo, I'm not calling you a liar. I'm calling the PlayStation blog a liar. Can you please give me with your internet computing device? I'm pretty sure Batman episode three. Yeah, out. they don't do that. They don't put the episodic it's, stuff. Because yeah. it's counted as downloadable mm -hmm. content or add on content. Yeah, Batman comes out this week. That's stupid. Batman three is out this week. I can't wait. Batman two ended so well. Can't wait to pick it up and see what's happening. Colin. Yes. Time for topic of the show. Guess what, Colin? In between episodes of PSI Love You XOXO, Nintendo announced the Switch. They sure did. Are you f familiar with the Switch? I am. Top level, because we have a whole reactions up over on kindoffunny.com. What do you think of the Nintendo Switch? I think it looks great. Right? I think it's going to inevitably have problems. Battery, power. But I, I'm, very tan support. I'm very tantalized by it. Yes. So are... P.S. I love you, XO, XO listeners and viewers. People like Cursa or Curse 4. Maybe Cursa if the 4 is counting as an A, mm. but you can't tell. You never know. Curse 4, Curse. Maybe it's Steve Kerr or his fourth child, Steve Kerr's fourth child. He wrote in or she wrote in to kindoffunny.com slash PSQ, just like you can to be part of the show, and says, I'll get into the thing very quickly. Is the Nintendo Switch the final nail in the Vita's coffin, and will it be the start of an exodus from Vita Island? I love my Vita, but with a busy work schedule and a significant other eating into my gaming time, it's probably my main gaming machine. Dot, dot, dot. As a Sony fan, not... I was surprised when Switch was shown that I feel I might have to jump ecosystems. With the Vita... Lacking AAA titles and Switch seeming the obvious replacement for people in my situation. It would break my heart to give up my passport to Vita Island and walk away from the connected PlayStation ecosystem. As much as I hate to say it, the Switch appears to be the first look to have the potential of killing off the ailing Vita marketplace. Dot dot. If people like myself jumped to Nintendo for our handheld, we might never look back. What do you guys think? Curs for. I don't think it really matters. I, isn't the, I, isn't the, the Vita, the, the nail's in the Vita coffin. The coffin has been buried. Yeah. We are all here grave robbers. We love our Vitas, we play our Vitas, we enjoy our Vitas. Yeah, but it's dead. We've said that forever. Does that matter? Should that matter to you? No, we've said in this show it doesn't matter to you. These games keep coming out. There's not the AAA, no Freedom Wars 2. Does it matter? Are you, are you, do you really need another Uncharted on it? No, because you're getting dang and rampas. Mama Kuma running through doing stuff. Mama Kuma's you're coming through. You're getting Dragon Quest Builders. You're moving the blocks around. Things are happening underneath. These are the worms going into the Vita's body and eating it and then making it something new. Well, I just want to be clear about one thing. Sure, lay it on. Uh, you're not allowed to leave Vita Island. So I like how people are like, oh, I'm going to ban it. Well, yeah, good luck. 
because uh, you don't leave. Once you're there, you, you, you don't you don't leave Vita Island. Number two, no one gets out alive. Um, <laughs> not I even mean, the Vita. Lola won't allow it. None of us will allow it. You're not. Sure. You're, we're all going down. I'll blow that fucking island to smithereens. Sure. Before. It'll be fucking. What's the what's that island where we blew up all the nuclear bombs? It'll be that island. Three Mile Island. No, that's not a. That, we didn't throw. We didn't blow up bombs on Three Mile <laughs> Island. <laughs> uh, I love it. That, there's that whole that island. Uh, what the fuck was it called? Long Island. I mean, that would make a lot of sense, but yeah. No. Uh, well, I don't know. Someone will tell me um, where the Manhattan Project was. No, no. Manhattan Project was was Manhattan. That was the, no, that was the island. no, it was in New Mexico where they blew that bomb up. Oh, there's no the islands 50, in New Mexico. In Colin. the 50s, they blew, were blowing up bombs because there's like all this great footage of them. Like they displaced all these natives and stuff and like yeah, watch yeah. the explosions with them. I can't. I don't know. I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> they watch the explosions with the natives. <laughs> Come on. All these guys are like, where are we going? You're like, we just need you off the island for a little bit. <laughs> then they turn them around. And just <laughs> guys are like, that's our island. I know. They're like, great. Wasn't that cool? Go back there and live, and we'll come check in on what the effects were on you. <laughs> Bikini Atoll. That's what I was thinking of. They watched it with the natives. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like generals, arms around them. They've all got binoculars. <laughs> <laughs> the bikini atoll, I think, is what it, what it all was. Right, cool. Um, I, I I do I I'm one thousand percent behind the switch. I'm very excited for the switch. I, I said in our switch reaction, right? This is the first time, and it's all hyperbole because again, there's a million things that can happen. What are they going to do for memory? What's the battery life going to be? What's third party support going to be? This is the first time, though, in a decade I've ever considered like, oh man, if like then if Batman Arkham whatever came out on Switch and on PS4, would I play which would I play it on? Because of how much I travel, right? Like I was playing on the plane all these games and it's like these are fun. I like Dragon Quest Builders, but man, I can't wait to get home to Titanfall, to Lara Croft, to Batman. And if I had the ability to take that on the road, that'd be awesome. And clearly that's what Vita was originally marketed as in a way and what we hoped it would become and it never did become it. So this is kind of I think the evolution of the Vita's plan, what the Vita should have been in a way. Not that I want PlayStation yeah. to give up on what PlayStation was doing. Yeah, I think that that's the big the big takeaway is that this can be an uh, first of all, yeah, I mean Sony's done with the Vita basically. That the you know, they'll, they'll it'll be alive for a few more years, I think. I I, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw Vita games through 2018 um, oh yeah because they're, they're out there people are buying them yeah. there's there's us the dedicated fan base that are buying Vita games but uh, it will be interesting I guess to see if if switch came in and took even that limited piece of the pie it's possible because you know I think that there's if, if valuable marketing that Sony is going to be able to look at for free um, from Nintendo first of all Sony certainly are and ing new stuff right all the time so what they can see here is like all right we maybe we release a new handheld you know PSP a new PlayStation portable a new Vita but is it worth it? Well, let's watch, see what Nintendo does. If Nintendo's thing bombs, then surely ours will bomb. If it does really well, then there's still a market for dedicated handheld gaming. Although Switch is not dedicated handheld exactly. gaming. Exactly. So um, we'll see. By the way. Yeah. From the Bikini Atoll. Please tell me. There, and the natives were like, yeah, let's watch it together. It's kind of sad. Of course it is. It's from the Wikipedia. It says, between 1946 and 1958, 23 nuclear devices were detonated by the United States at seven test sites located on the reef inside the atoll in their air or underwater. They had a combined fission yield of 42.2 megatons. The testing began with the Operation Crossroads series in July 1946. Prior to nuclear testing, the residents initially accepted resettlement voluntary to another atoll, believing that they would be able to return home within a short time. Ron, Ron Gurick atoll could not produce enough food and the islanders starved. When they could not return home, they were relocated to another atoll for six months before choosing to live on Killy Island, a small island one-sixth the size of their home island. Some were, it, were able to return to Bikini Island in 1970 until further testing revealed dangerous levels of strontium-90. The Islanders have been the beneficiary of several trust funds created by the United States government, which as of 2013 covered medical treatment and other costs and paid $550 annually to each individual. When you are a native and the United States government comes around, say no. It's always a bad deal. It's always a raw deal, as they say. Now, Colin. Yeah. Ziggy, why Giggy X with Ziggy backwards says, "Hello, Colin and Greg. Mm. Zachary here, and I'm writing in to kindoffunny.com/slash PSQ, just like everyone should. After watching the trailer for the new Nintendo Switch, now that it seems as if they are integrating portability with the console with a beautiful-looking screen, do you feel Sony might keep up with the console race coming into a shiny new cycle with the Switch and the rumored monster, the rumored monster known as Scorpio?" Do you think we can expect a revival of the beloved Vita with a new PlayStation V? The V could stand for five and the Vita. Where 
they have released a new version of the PlayStation and the Vita to go hand in hand like they originally intended, maybe even replace the DualShock with the Vita as well. Does this seem like a possible future to you guys? Do you have any thoughts on my theory? Possible, but unlikely. I think, Super I mean, unlikely. I, I just, I'll reiterate what I said before that I think that there's valuable, there's just valuable field evidence that Sony's going to be able to garner from the Switch. If PS PlayStation 5 or whatever the next PlayStation is, is surely r and as well. Sure. And maybe there is going to be some sort of component with that. It seems like Sony's wanted to democratize a little bit and go towards like, well, we, you know, now you can use PlayStation Now on PC, remote play on PC, um, it, or maybe not PlayStation Now, but remote play on PC. You, you, you can then cycle through your PlayStation and send it to your PC. But it's, I don't think it's native to PC. Whatever, whatever, the, whatever the case might be, it seems like Sony's investigating different ways to play PlayStation devices. Yeah. I think that they would be fucking smitten if they saw a market in which they can have another handheld and a console successful and have them be one and the same. But the problem is, is that, and this is the thing that I think one of the pieces of bad news, the aforementioned pieces of bad news, that I think we're going to hear about about Switch is that it's just not powerful. Sure. Um, Zelda looks fantastic, but Zelda is also running on a Wii U. Right. So you have to like. Th- th- I think the sweet spot for the pricing of Switch is $300, and to get all of that technology into that device for $300, it just cannot be very powerful. So if you're looking at Sony pushing the boundaries, as they usually do, with technology, and you wanted something similar like that, then I just think that it's not practical and not feasible right now. I think that they're probably pretty focused on the home console market, but I wouldn't expect... I don't I, I, I don't. I don't know what to expect, considering Pro is coming out, Scorpio is coming out next year, which seems like a new console. Yeah. So... I don't know where all this sits and like where all this lays. I think Sony's going to be kind of have to, by nature, be more reactionary to both what Nintendo and Microsoft are doing now. See, and they my, put themselves in that position. I, and I agree with that. But I think Nintendo, I think for Sony, it's done. I know we always you always talk about it. And I think it, that they are crazy enough to put out another Vita. But I think the ship has sailed. I think they're internally doubling down on PlayStation Four and VR, and these are the platforms we worry about going forward. And I think even if Switch comes out and it is this huge success, right? And it, I don't know what we garner that number as. It's not going to sell as much as the Wii. If it actually gets competitive, you know, in terms of what the first year of PlayStation 4 was versus the first year of Switch, something to that effect. I think that they look at and they're like, man, yeah, we should have committed more to Vita. Maybe we'd be in a different spot. But I don't think it changes their course. Them thinking, man, f- fuck, for PlayStation 5, we have to do this. I think they continue to go the horsepower route. And then I think Nintendo does get to run away with this. And I know you've talked about it before. Why should they give up the portable uh, gaming handheld market, right? Why give up that floor to somebody? But I just don't think that it's there anymore for a dedicated handheld. Lo- and so that, that's what you see with this thing, right? Where it's going to be, they've already started stressing it, right? That no, 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 this is a console, but you can take it on the go. Cause that's going to be their out when, oh man, this thing sucks. I only get an hour and a half battery life on a plane with it. Well, like, well, you can, you, you know, it's meant to be played at home. Blah, blah, blah. Like, that'll be their answer to it. Uh, I think it'll just, if anything, they'll be like, that's an interesting direction. They went, but we're going to continue to go chase what a PC could do, but on your TV and without the hassle of everything else. We'll see this next year will be very interesting. This next calendar year, 2017 really will be, Super, super interesting to see how it all plays out with the new console for Microsoft, I think even more than the Switch. And, you know, like the Switch is the reaction of investors from the Switch was not positive. Interesting. So right? um, I think stock went down 6% after it was announced, Yeah. Um, which erases quite a bit of value in a company that big. So, but I mean, like that can turn around pretty quick, right? I mean, like, the, the, the takeaway I took, right, is I went to Missouri. I hung out with my friends who have real jobs and adult responsibilities like children. And, you know, the kid downstairs is playing an original Wii. My friend hasn't played anything since his GameCube. And we were talking about it and they all knew about the Switch. They had heard about it on the news. They thought it was cool. They wanted to know what I thought of it. And I thought, and that was a two, three days after the announcement of it. I was like, damn, that's actually pretty powerful. My prediction on Switch is that it's going to be fine. It's not going to, I mean, if it outsells Wii U, it, it must outsell Wii U. If it sells it in must. Wii U numbers, it's it's over. It's game over for Nintendo and hardware. It's just completely game over. Um, I, I What I said was that I think it'll do somewhere in between GameCube and N64. So you're looking at somewhere like Lifetime. So I think it'll do somewhere between 25 and 35 million units, which is respectable, um, but not extraordinary. I just, I, I don't, I'm not a believer that Nintendo has a dedicated market to it nearly the size that it used to anymore. And people have to remember that the dedicated Nintendo market has indeed seemed to have shrunk constantly since the 80s. Yeah. Um, and I know people are kind of, and this is in the console market, not in the handheld market. But, you know, you're going from, what, 60 million NESs to 50 million, something like that, SNESs to 30-something million N64s to 20-something million GameCubes, and then up to 100 million Wiis, and then back down to, like, 12 million we use it's just not good you know and even with handhelds game boy at about 100 million and then ds at, at gba i don't know 50 something million i don't know what it was i don't remember anymore but then ds 150 million then 3ds down to like 60 million so it just seems like there's these anomalies but otherwise the number the trajectory is down um i just don't know that nintendo has 
Nintendo has a very ardent, hardcore fan base. I'm super excited about the Switch. I'm going to buy it day one for sure. Regardless of the bad news, I really want it. I think it's just a neat idea and I want to support it. But um, they need to do much more. And the, the problem with them is that they're in a weird space right now because they're making their mobile games, which I think is smart. They're making the new device, which is going to kill the Wii U, which is fine. It's going to kill the 3DS, which might not be fine for them. And then it leaves them in a strange spot where they're not really, they're not going to have the power to compete. They're not going to have the third party support to compete. Yeah. I just don't see it doing much better than traditional Nintendo, tra- Nintendo hardware does, but I'd like to be proven wrong. The yeah. price is going to be very important. I, I hope my hope behind it, right, in the fa- is the fact that everyone seems invigorated on this idea. Whereas that was not the case with Wii U. It, it, Wii was a slow burn on that, and then it got away from us, right? And it does seem like what we are, uh, why PlayStation 4 was successful based on one trailer. It seems as if Nintendo is doing what PlayStation did and saying, we're about games again. We're about the game, or we're about you. You know, and There were no kids in there. There was no touchscreen and waggle crap. It was like kids of your contemporaries who wanted to go to a party on a rooftop and <laughs> bring their yeah, Switch Yeah, some pretty funny them. memes with like the girl being like, oh, Lindsay brought her Switch again. All we want to do is hang out and talk. Get like, your yeah, fucking little... switch, Lindsay. So we'll see. I mean, people are like, I, 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 I really do enjoy watching people drink the Kool Aid on everything that's announced in the video game industry. You know, like yeah. I think there's, you know, I think the Switch is a terrible name, um, and, I uh, but I think that that doesn't. It, it might matter, but it might not. We the it didn't matter. It doesn't matter. Sometimes I think there are a lot of ingenious names in the Nintendo ecosystem. I think N64 is an ingenious name. I think GameCube is a fucking awesome name. I think Wii is a great name. Wii U was a mistake because it, no one knew what the fuck it was made it seem like it was tenuously or intimately involved with the Wii and it wasn't. And so the name matters, but uh, really about the mind share, the market share available to this device is what's going to be most pertinent. And I don't know that that has a ceiling nearly as high as what people think. Mm, mm, um, we'll see. And it's coming out again in the middle, in the middle ground and tip consoles that sure. come out in the middle typically don't do well. So, okay, that's it. Topic of the show was brought to you by Uber. And I want to give a shout out before I even read the ad to Kevin Coella who put up the clock that I asked for last time for every show but this show. What's the time code for this ad, Kevin Coella? Huh? 5655. Yeah, 5655. I'll show you 5655. Ladies and gentlemen, Toss was brought to you by Uber. We've all taken jobs to earn extra cash. Back in the day, Colin Moriarty worked as a landscaper. Remember that, Colin? I do. Uh, but now... Uber's got a better way for you to earn extra cash and a little money on the side. It's so much easier today, thanks to Uber. Uber is the ultimate side hustle, they say. Driving with Uber is a new way you can earn extra cash whenever you want. It's not not just another J-O-B. They spelled out J-O-B. The Uber ad is always an interesting read. It's a journey, if you will, Colin. It's a totally flexible way to earn, of course. You can turn it off and on just like it's because it's your car. You just turn on the app and you say you want to work now. You work for as long as you want. Take as many rides as you want. You turn it off, you get out. Colin, do we like Uber? Oh my God, we really do love Uber. We ride Uber all the time, and that's not, they didn't pay us to say that. I would say that I ride Uber with all due respect to Uber too much. I think we both do that 100%. And I think the fact is, like, that's always the cool thing when you talk to an Uber driver is the fact that they're doing it to earn extra cash. I was in Columbia. This guy is like, well, I just sent my third daughter to college, so I had to start driving Uber or whatever. And it's this whole thing. It's like it was homecoming weekend. He was going, he was going to go for 12 hours and then go home. But if you wanted to go home early, he could. If you didn't want to go home, if you didn't want to ride at all or drive at all, he didn't have to. Uh, if you have a few spare hours here and there, you can drive Uber and earn some extra money. So listen, if you enjoy earning extra cash, if there's something special you'd like to buy, your car can start making you money. Go ahead right now. Get your side hustle on. Sign up to drive with Uber today. Go to uber.com slash drive now. That's uber.com slash drive now. U-B-E-R dot com slash drive now. <laughs> When they spell out words, I get it. But who who hasn't heard of Uber at this point? I don't know. Someone. Someone else. Listening there. to this podcast, we talk about it enough as is. I don't think people that listen to this podcast even pay attention to what we're saying half the time. That's 100% correct. I agree with that 1,000%. Colin? Yes. Let's check in with Trophy Time. I mean, there's nothing that interesting going okay, on Okay. That was I mean, there's a, game, there's a game that I've not even seen announced yet called Bridge Constructor. I'm Coming in. to PS4 and Vita. We can check in on those. On the Vita? I'm constructing bridges? And Just Dance 2017, I'm just interested to see what those are. I also want to see Nobunaga's ambition, Sphere of Influence Ascension, just for shits and giggles. Okay. Other than, and we'll do Big big Buck Arcade as Why well. Why don't we just read this the rest of the show? So let's do Bridge Constructor on oh, PS4 and Vita. Too. Uh, 28 bronze, 10 silver, 3 gold, and a platinum. Uh, let's see. Car Insignia West Central Bridge. So you get trophies for cars can drive on all the Island 1's bridges. Island 2. So there's different islands, Greg. Got it. Sounds and then there are different so 
it's a three mile island there's on there. a bunch of different things cars tanks tank trucks can drive on all of these bridges complete all optional levels completed all levels with trucks is a gold trophy called solid ground with an exclamation point after it. there's trophies for scores there's trophies for the support the weight support so like 15,000. I don't know, man. I don't know about this. This is a little boring. Just Dance 2017. 29. This is the PS4 version. 29 bronze, 7 silver, 4 gold, and a platinum. Complete your first song. Get three stars on the song. Spend 500 mojos. You know Spend 5,000 mojos. I probably won't get that one. Reach max level. Pray for mojo. Finish first on all the dance quests with a superstar difficulty. You need to do this one? I'm going to pass. You excited? No. Big Buck Arcade trophies Woo! on PS4. 38 bronze, 7 silver, 3 gold, and a platinum. I like these. You're mine. Get 10 headshots in the Whitetail Adventure. This is a little gruesome about getting head, scoring headshots on a deer. Poor guy just out there. 25 headshots and 50 headshots. Killed 10 deer by shooting them in the heart. Killed 25 deer by shooting them in the heart. Kill 50 deer by shooting them in the Remember, heart. they introduced a few years ago in these games, the ones where like, you saw x-ray vision, you could see their heart. I'm assuming that's what's happening here. Kill 10 trophy animals by shooting them in the head. Kill 25 trophy animals by shooting them in the head. Let's see. Killed 10 critters in Whitetail Adventure. Killed 30 critters in Whitetail Adventures. Killed all the critters in Whitetail <laughs> Adventures. Extinction event. What do they call the kill all the critters? Jesus. Trophy? Critter gumbo. Yeah. Uh, let's see. How do these sell, you think, Carl? Probably the pretty well. Versions of Big Buck Hunter. Probably pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. And then finally, Nobunaga's Ambition. Finally. Sphere of Influence Ascension. 10 bronze, 13 silver, 5 gold, and a platinum. Step by step, proof of having completed a mission. Okay. First battle, proof of having joined your first battle. What if I don't have proof? Proof of having been promoted to Chainwell. Oh, so this is the trophies are proof. Every one of these trophies is proof. Oh. And I'm going to X out of this for proof of me being bored. Your trophy time question of the week comes from kindoffunny.com slash PSQ where you can ask your question and it comes from Kevin White 24. What's up, Colin and Greg? Mm. <laughs> trophy time question here <laughs> for you. I recently downloaded and absolutely loved the beautiful Zelda ripoff that is Oceanhorn. When looking through the trophy list, it appeared to be relative, a relatively easy platinum without too much grinding involved. As I was marching towards completing the game as well as all the trophies, I realized something that I thought very interesting. The platinum trophy could be achieved without beating the game. During my final battle huh. with Oceanhorn, the last trophy that I needed popped on my screen. Parentheses, kill 50 spawn. Followed by that beautiful notation of the Platinum Trophy. Again, this happened during the final battle of the game. Is this something you've seen often over the years? It seems to me that actually finishing a game should factor into obtaining a Platinum, but since I only have four Platinum so far, I don't have anywhere near the same level of experience that you two do. It would be very interesting to hear your thoughts on this. Thanks for all you do, and keep up the fantastic work, Kevin. In a game with a narrative or a campaign, I cannot think of an example where you do not get a trophy or beating it. That's what so I was So therefore, too. you would need it for the platinum. My 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 thing is, it's he's getting the kill fifty spawn in the final battle with Ocean Horn in the final. It's like, it's I understand that it's not beating the game, but it is right there. It is on the precipice. If you've gone that far, you've basically beaten it. You're going to beat this boss, you assume, and roll the credits. Yeah, I don't think it's a big deal, but sure. it's unusual. I've never, I can't I've never think, heard of it. And that was the thing is, yeah, I'm sure I there's an example. Of, of course there is. Of course there is. I just can't think of it. Probably some mahjong game. Where you just that's different. I mean, like, I in, know, like in a game, around. in a game with a camp, like that game has a, a a campaign. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Interesting. Could be the only one. I don't know. Yeah, but if you have one, ladies and gentlemen, let us know in the comments below or tweet at kind of funny Kevin and say, "Hey, kind of funny Kevin, it's good to see you. Maybe you should get a haircut. Don't mention the trophy thing at all. He'll understand. He'll understand what this is about. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Call. Let's check in with listeners. Hello, listeners. Uh, we have a piece of physical mail, Colin Moriarty, oh. sent to the kind of funny P.O. Box, of course, P.O. Box 22541, San Francisco, California, 94122. It's on the Twitch page if I read too quickly. Loose leaf, huh? October 12th, 2016, from the Who Doer. Hey, whoever reads this. I was cleaning up around the house and found my old PS2 box. I opened it up for a quick nostalgia trip and found this little booklet that I have never seen. 
I asked my older brother where it came from, and he said it came with our PS1. It's kind of weird to hold this book and know that it is literally as old as I am. It's actually because my brother... That it's actually because of my brother that PlayStation is my in my blood. I'm actually writing this the day before the launch of PlayStation VR. Anyways, I don't want a cool little treasure like this to be locked away in a dusty closet. You guys can have it or just give it away on Colin and Greg Live. Someone out there will appreciate it. Thanks for all the laughs and happy early birthday to Colin. Much love from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Bill Abdu. I can't read how he wrote his last name. The Who Doer. P.S. Who the hell writes? Who the hell handwrites letters still? What's so funny about what, is, what do we got here? What is this? This seems like it's just a booklet that teases game like PlayStation games 1 contemporaneous games. to when the console was purchased. What it looks like 1997 or so. This is a place I looked at it briefly. This is a PlayStation One thing. Yep. Okay. And what I'm so what I'm looking at here. First of all, it's just so I remember all these games and what what. What's so funny about this is just Kev, we, can we, thought get these, we thought these games were pretty. Show it here. Show it here. Show some stuff here. So, so a little thing you got here, packed in with your PlayStation One, you assume. And then it says, not even a Dual Shock. There's a little bit oh, of a. Kid. There's a little bit of a like you know they do a little. Never under under never underestimate never the power, the power of PlayStation. PlayStation. You might remember that from a different podcast we used to do. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, and then that's kind of cool. parts of your brain. And then NFL Game Day 98. I remember looking at that Patrick Fenella. NHL house. Face Off 98. MLB 98. It's so real. Fuck yeah, NCAA. NBA, NCAA. The multi tap. Oh, you needed the multi tap, sir. Gran Turismo, the original. Right there. Come a long way. Yeah, sure has. Jet Moto. Remember Jet Moto? I'm I surprised did. Jet Moto never came back. Yeah. Cool, cool Borders. Borders 2. Let's see. Blasto. Blasto. Phil Hartman. Was yep. the voice of Blasto, in case you didn't know that. Now you do. Armored Core, which was a From Software game, I believe. Steel Rain, right? Armored Core was from? I think so. I do believe so. Let's see. Spawn the Eternal. Oh, man. There was a game for you. Bushido Blade, which I fucking hated. That was a square game. Oh, here we go. The Analog Controller with the Divots. Cardinal Sin. Crash, Crash Bandicoot, Bandicoot 2. Look at the, the Naughty, Naughty Dog, Dog logo. logo. Universal. Intelligent Evan. Cube. Intelligent Cube, I think. I could be wrong about this. I feel like Intelligent Cube was one of the games that was created on NetEurosy. Don't forget about the popular and rapper, rapper. rapper, of course. They got that for Christmas in 1997. No touch. No touching. Final Fantasy VII. Your skin's soft. I know. Wild Arms. There you go. Memory Cards. Saga Frontier. Soon. So tactics. this is so funny. Final Fantasy Tactics, one of the great games of all time. Saga Frontier, the game I got after Final Fantasy Tactics. Fucking terrible. <laughs> so yeah, this this must be. I'm gonna say this was summer 1997. The sports games are 98. Yeah. And uh, Final Fantasy VII Tactics. Yeah, Sa Tactics copyright was 97. Yeah. Tactics was turn of the uh, turn of the the year. Final Fantasy VII was uh, late summer 1997. Now look ahead Crash of their time. They already they, are, they were already advertising the PlayStation merch. That now, now you can get through PlayStation. Oh, PlayStation there. Underground, remember that? Yeah, PlayStation Underground, your demo discs in there, your merch, you get all this stuff. God, I wish I... Oh. It's a familiar looking hat. It is. P possibly our landlord wears it, and then some greatest hits there. Crash Bandicoot. Game Day 97, greatest hits. That's what the kids are going to get. Pretty cool, man. We'll keep Only it PlayStation relic. offers a greatest hits library that fe features some it's of the great best shape. games yeah, ever made at all-time low prices. Just twenty four ninety nine. Build your PlayStation game library quickly. Period. That's a statement. Build your PlayStation game library quickly. New titles. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Huh. I'm gonna go put it up here on the little shelf. That thing has the late '90s aesthetic. Oh yeah, just the weird. It looks like it looks <laughs> look. In this, you know, they would have printed that on a poster and just put it in your put it in your. Room. Oh, I would have totally had that in my room. Put it up here. Cool. Thank you for sending that over. Appreciate you. I like how you wrote. Please don't kill me. USPS. Sp it's thing. probably because it was too heavy for a stamp. I think he meant like don't crush it. Don't uh, fold up the page. Did you write anything else in here? Any other notes? No. No other notes. But why did he write that? It wasn't on the inside of the envelope? Yeah. I think it was just a joke for our for our, us. It was it was a little thing for Not Colin a funny and Greg. Joke. Okay. Well, Not a funny joke. We make those all the time, so that's fine. Colin! My pen shot out at me. Yes, you're right. I do make funny jokes all the time. No, I said I said no. That's not the opposite of what I said. Thank you for the compliment. No, I'm, well, I don't mean like I meant bolt. Oh. <laughs> All right, here we're going to go. Thank you so much. Sir Kev Lar. 
wrote in the kind of funny.com slash PSQ and says, hi guys. With the PlayStation VR out now in the wild and being promoted in the mom and grop shops, what are your opinions on the physical retailers charging people to try PSVR? My local game, put in parentheses, British version of GameStop, sent out a tweet advertising for people to try PSVR for five. He puts a little L in front of this number. I'm going to say five. No, I know. We know the real answer. It's five pounds. Many euros. Many euros. Many euros. Five pounds. Five mini euros for 15 minutes, 10 pounds for 30 minutes. Personally, I was disgusted by this. Why not just let people try, make bookings and try it for free it would be great marketing for them i tweeted back at the store stating my opinion and their response was along the lines of quote if people purchase psvr then they get their trial money back rather than get into a twitter debate with them i just stopped following them but i did see other people agreeing with me and continuing the debate i would like to hear your thoughts on retailers charging for trying playstation vr it's ridiculous many thanks kevin it's, it's completely ridiculous i agree with colin it, but I, the whole thing is like i feel it's it's a weird choice it's within their right, and you did the correct thing of, okay, unfollow them, don't support them. Make that statement of, this is a dumb business, this is a dumb decision that's anti-consumer and anti-people trying this technology, so I'm not going to support you for that reason. Yeah, don't the, flame it, them, don't be jerks, but make it very clear, vote with your wallet. I can see... Th- I can see wallet with pounds in it. I can see a little bit where they were coming from with this, so it, especially with their, like, well, specifically with the getting the money back, so the idea is, like, if you would put the money down, then you're like, oh, I guess I might as well just buy, the, yeah. buy it, and then I get my money back in a way. I mean, it's kind of stupid, but it's totally antithetical to put it, pushing hardware. If I was Sony, I would have called them and been like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Exactly. Um, I, and you understand too, of course, that it gets rid of the look you lose. Uh, a PlayStation VR demo is more hands-on, more in-depth than, all right, cool, go play the N64 hooked up to that TV and you'll, or even the PlayStation demo station, right? This is, all right, let me put it on. Let me explain what you're doing. Let me explain how you do this. You need a person there. So you don't want looky loose or, all right, cool, I'm just going to, I'm going to come over and do this and never do it again. Like Sony did their own tour, of course, where they did that, where you just, you know, sign up and come get a, make a booking and come play it. But maybe the game doesn't have the reason, the resources to sit there and walk through the hundred people who just want to try it for no reason. Yeah. But, but I agree. It's not a bad, I think it's a crazy, there's movie. no, there's not a good look whatsoever. So I, I, I uh, when I saw that floating around the past few days, I thought it was I was quite disturbed by it simply because it's it doesn't seem logical to get hardware, push hardware like you want people to just play it and try it. If they don't like it, they don't like it. Yeah. Um, these companies are going to be looking for ways to nickel and dime everyone forever and, and uh, until they just don't fucking exist anymore because we'll be buying games digitally. So goodbye. Next question comes from Son of Mar over at kind of funny.com slash PSQ. Hey, guys. I've been wondering this for a while and wanted your input. <clears throat> Ever since VR got announced, something kept bugging me about the fact that there would be two environments of gaming that the first parties would develop for. My question is this. Do you think PSVR could have a major hand in the lack of first party developed games for the PlayStation 4? Or is there something else going on with the management of PS4 first party, first party titles? Thanks, guys. Jeff, a.k.a. Son of Mar. No, I don't. Th- I don't think that VR has anything to do with it because uh, I think Northwest Studio and, and London Studio are obviously going to be VR centric. You assume Polyphony will put it in Gran Turismo, etc. Um, Evolution obviously put it in that Drive Club before they were shut down. But um, the fact is, is that most of, we know what most of the first parties are doing, or we assume that they're going to be doing something AAA. So Sucker Punch and Naughty Dog are working on something we don't know, but everyone else basically we know what they're doing. So and they're not VR games. I think the first party trickle of games is just to the fact that I think it's harder to to develop for PlayStation 4 than people thought. And not that it was going to be a cakewalk, but I think they thought it'd be up to speed quicker. Their games would be out faster. Everything would be great. When there is going to be new hurdles, new Mm -hmm. learning curves, new different things. And I, yeah, I don't think, I think it's from what I understand from the way it's always been explained to us, the way Sony works by Shu or somebody else. And I don't think they're blowing smoke is the fact that it's, they want the first parties working on what they want to work on. So I don't think anybody's coming in and be like, all right, time to make a fucking VR game. I think they're probably saying, you know, hey, if you're interested in this technology, let's talk about it, blah, blah, blah. But I don't think that's at all what's happening here. We're yeah, seeing people I don't think so either. Wall. I don't think so either. Young Blase says, hi, Colin and Greg. Hello. Quick question. With the, with, I'm sorry. Will the Vita memory card ever drop in price? Currently, the 32 gigabyte is $80 on Best Buy, while a regular 32 gigabyte card is worth $20. I hope they announce a new Vita that supports regular cards. Love you guys. David, that will never happen. That one, and he's also David is oh he I see what he's saying don't listen to him at all um I don't think it'll ever happen that they're gonna drop these prices until like they're trying oh, to move this everything yeah, it'll, it'll, but I mean like the one is uh, I mean they're already clearing it out where they're not selling those units in st- so many stores right like it's so hard to find a Vita in a, a new box ready to go I don't understand what's taking so long for them to be for ever, all these retailers to be like I'm ready to clean this out and be done with it I don't know I don't know I'm surprised by it too 
I don't understand why they did that. It was such a damaging thing to the console. 100%. To the handle. And I guess the thing I was saying when I that I don't think they'll ever do that more is I don't think they're going to announce a new Vita that supports regular cards. That's for sure not going to happen. That was what he topped off. We'll there. find out. You know some information? No. I don't. I'm not going to do it, Colin. I just, I'm just not, I'm just not, not convinced, pardon the double negative, that they're not going to make another handle. You well, know, I'm talking about. I think I, you're saying that they're not going to release another handheld with proprietary memory. I hope they announce a new Vita. I'm assuming he means like a PSP Go. Oh, kind of, I see. Kind of, I, kind of move, I see. A lateral move. Oh, no, no, than no, no, a sequel no, no. I don't think it. they're going to make like a slim. Like, yeah. They already made a slim. Yeah, exactly. And that's what it was. DJ Mutton Chops writes into kindoffunny.com slash PXQ and says, Hey, guys, hey. If PSI Love You XOXO had trophies that revolved around the show, what trophies would you have? He has an example. He says there'd be a silver trophy. Name, Anime Tit Lover's Vengeance. Description, PSN's worst name of the week gets banned from PSN. He says, thanks, babies. I don't think that's part of the trophy. Uh, off the top of my head, because it, it's going to be rewarding you, the viewer or listener, right? There'd be one for, a, it would be a Baker's Dozen, and it would be, you've listened to 14 shows where I've screamed a Baker's Dozen. That's one I put out there. Bronze, of course, is garbage. You know Baker's Dozen 13, is that the That's joke? the joke, remember? I never say Baker's Dozen on a 13. Mm. I say it around every other one, but not 13. You haven't done a 13 in a long time. I intentionally don't, actually, as I told you. Well, that only proliferates it, you know. I know. I don't think you do, because you just said, even though that's not what it is. Yeah, but I, you're, not, I, you're not in here. You're not knowing. You don't know what's going on. I understand on. exactly what's going on. I don't think you understand what's going on. I think you're a little tired. I think you're a little you fatigued. I'm great. I slept on a plane today. I'm fucking dying. Oh, I'm sure you're feeling good. You like it. Now the shirt. I don't know. I just you don't, don't know. like my Beetle Bailey shirt. I feel like it kind of looks like a woman's shirt. Well, I, you said that when I walked in. I don't understand why. I don't and know. I'm not. And I'm not fighting. What? I, what about it makes it look? I like mean, a you have shirt. a womanly body, but other than oh, that's that, probably. I mean, right there is probably the real problem. I mean, you know, if you want to wear women's shirts, that's cool. I don't know. I just don't. Oh, don't be wrong. If this, if it, tur- if it nets out, that you go to, go to the Mizzou store right now. Look at the men's shirts. If I'm sure is, it's not a woman's shirt. If it, I'll tell you right now. If I was, if women's shirts look this good on me, I'd fucking be rocking blouses left and right. I just, because uh, uh, here's the problem too. It, it looks it, like a Michigan shirt. Well, I mean, it's a throw. It says, I mean, it says Mizzou on. I understand that, but just no. I know, no, 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 no. It's a throwback. When you get when you get done, and Kevin, if you want to, no, you don't edit this show, so I'm not gonna make any more work for myself. Google everybody, Beetle Bailey, Mizzou. You'll see big old Beetle Bailey wearing this shirt. It's fine. That's what he does. Beetle Bailey, sir. Mort, an MU alum. Checkmate, Northeastern. You didn't make Beetle Bailey. We He's always up to shenanigans it. in the army. We don't make much of anything, actually. <laughs> Come to think of it. I don't even know what the fuck we were talking about. Oh, trophies. <laughs> Do you have any dumb trophies we'd have on this show? No. Please go <laughs> to the forums. Kindoffunny.com slash forums. You tell us your trophies. You're more interested than us. You're more, you're more fascinating than us. Oh, my God. How long is this next thing you're about to read? This is so... I'm looking through. This is up for a topic of the week, but it didn't work out. Oh, but that okay. is a great thing. SFDJ, your topic was ginormous, and it was, an er- it was in the early running for topic of the week and then it fell out. But this brings us to an interesting point. It's a criticism of the show, but really, ladies and gentlemen, it's a criticism of you. I don't want to hear of you. it. Oh, we're fine in this. Don't worry oh, about okay. us. Never mind. Hats. Nope. I was going to say hats. <laughs> hat. Hat. Hat shaped hat. <laughs> Fucking inner cap. How hard is it to inner cap? Hat shaped hat says, love the show. Have listened to every episode since the very beginning. Please, please, please. Change up the type of questions you read from the people. I feel there is a constant rotation of the same questions read over and over. Number one. Hey, guys, I just bought a PS4. Dot, dot, dot. Please tell me what games I should like. Number two. When's the last time hey, you read something like that? We haven't. We did a whole episode about the Vita, so we never had to do it again. Hey, guys, sometimes I don't like gaming. Do you ever feel like not gaming? Will I ever like gaming again? When have we <laughs> talked about that recently? Well, it comes this sounds up. like a bunch of fucking nonsense. Number three. Hey, guys, I love trophies. Don't you love trophies, too? But don't you hate it when the games don't have enough trophies? Four. Hey, guys, this game was delayed. That sucks. Insert Shigeru Miyamoto quote about delayed games, which gets used so much that the dude should be collecting royalty checks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, why do you guys think games get delayed? Number five. Hey, guys, there are too many games coming out. How should I decide to spend my money? Love the show, but I really don't think we need to revisit these topics for at least another year. Thanks. I don't disagree, but I also don't rem- When are these... Listen, hats, hat, hat. 
I don't know what you're talking. I really don't understand the criticism. I, mean, I don't think we get these. Again, this we is were ti- we were tired to have those questions. We would call people out for the. I just yeah. got a PS4. I just got a PS4. I'm like I don't. No, I'm not anymore. Yeah, you're just Google. Google for God's sake. I hear what you're saying, but I don't necessarily. What, like when have, I don't even remember even talking about half of those things. Like from a reader question. They, yeah, they pop up, I think, occasionally in different ways. I mean, this is really a criticism of you. That's what I'm saying. Ask better questions. No, I mean of you. Oh, of me? Yeah. No, it's, you yeah, it's pick them. the questions. Yeah, I pick the best I can. I've jumped into that. I've jumped in there and gotten plenty of questions that weren't in that. In that. Well, and again, though, you're, we're both. Don't turn it around on me all of a sudden, you stupid motherfucker. <laughs> Be on my side for once in a fight, will you? Ask better no. questions. <laughs> don't ask really long questions. Don't ask. You know, people are always like, I see that you're once again ignoring my Dark Souls question. Yes, we don't play Dark Souls. Why would we talk Guess about what? Dark Souls? We don't care about Dark Souls. We're sorry. I know this is going to hurt you at a core place in your body. But it will hurt many of them. I just don't care. Many of them. Out and there I right don't now, care about Gran Turismo. And I don't like Little Big Planet that much. I do, though. I can and God of War is kind of like a fun game, but Kratos sucks. But he looks better you know? than his new one, though, if we're, talking, if we're being real. And I kind of miss Big Big and Zipper Interactive. No, you don't. You you just want to miss them. You don't really miss Remember them. Remember Pursuit Force? Yeah. It Remember? Was, it was good. It was fun. Little Deviants? Yeah, exactly. Here we go. Yeah, I remember. I, I can understand missing Zipper because you were fucking all up in that SOCOM. You were playing SOCOM left and right. I was all up in that Unit 13, son. Yeah. Written by very own... That doesn't make any sense. Written by our very own <laughs> friend. <laughs> friend. And founder of Podcast Beyond, Jeremy Dunham. That's fine to be up in the one game that was a deviation from what they made. And I, I don't was think all, that makes I, you a zipper fanboy. And that fan was all boy. up in Mag Maybe. for an afternoon, at least. <laughs> no one was up in Mag for an afternoon. <laughs> uh, Massive action game. Never forget. Never let them tell you that's not what it stands for. Mr. J says, hi, Colin and Greg. I was browsing the new games on PSN profiles and noticed a game called Eight Days. It reminded me of a game called Eight Days, developed by Sony London for the PS3 that got canceled in 2008. Mm. To say that I was disappointed would be putting it lightly. So my question is, what game cancellation was the most disappointing to you? Thanks. You guys are awesome. I don't even have a PlayStation anymore, but I still listen to the podcast. The Getaway 3. Oh, really? Yeah. I was going to go Warrior's Lair. That was disappointing because we fucking played it. Yep. And that shows you how long. If you don't remember this one, it was on Vita. They, it was one of the ones that got totted around. There was an earthquake when you played it one time. Uh, it was That's going right. to be It was going to be a, a Diablo on Vita. That's right. A Diablo on I Vita where that. you made your own lair and then you could go fight other people. But you could also just run and play it and it would be a Diablo. And I was like, yes. It I was will, on stage E3. I will play this forever. This would be a great game. And there's times where I'm like right now, what do I want to play in Vita? I'm kicking around looking for something. I'm like, Warrior, an, oof, an action RPG like that, a little dungeon crawler running around getting all this loot. That would totally fit the bill right now. Another one is Six Days in Fallujah, which was a Konami oh, yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. That was done as well. That was, uh, yeah, pretty much done. I think it was a tactical shooter, um, and uh, it took place in Iraq, and it was too offensive for all the fucking crybabies out there So um, that you know want to cry about literally everything that happens in the world. So The Kevin Coelho's of the world. Exactly. Um, so the uh, continued pussification... Ha! of uh, everyone uh, forced us to not be able to play that game. Now, whether it would have been good or not, I don't know, but I would have been interested to play a game contemporary. Sure. We, we When that game was supposed to come out, we were still winding down in Iraq, so it would have been contemporary to the war we were we were in. And I still, I'm still interested and excited to see games that take place in Iraq and Afghanistan, and I think that we will eventually get them. Colin, you want to break somebody's heart? I'd love to. We're going to call it Ride Jack Alert. Hi, Colin and Greg. Hello. He said, wait for Colin to say it back, and you fell right into it. During Paris Games Week last year, it was announced that Dreams would have a beta in 2016. Seeing as the year is almost over, do you guys think this is still going to happen, or do you think the development of Dreams is in a rough spot? Love you guys. Greetings, Wes. Yeah, I don't I don't know what's going on with Dreams. And, it ain't going to happen. And I saw this thing. Well, th- I think a beta will happen, but it's not going to happen this year. Well, that's what he's the, saying. Yeah, he's by 2016. The I saw this. I forgot to put it in the Roper's report. It wasn't really a big piece of news that Media Molecule has like another office now. Hmm. Um, I guess apparently a Gil- in Guilford maybe or something or is that where they are? They're in Bristol? Something like that. I don't know. I'm, they, I, these yeah, are all weird these spots. These are all made, made up. Exactly. Anyway. They're but, all in London. But um, I, I'm concerned for them and I'm concerned about that game. Yeah. Um, they came and showed us to it, uh, showed us at GDC. See? Nice people. Yeah. You know, we love them. Um, obviously a lot of talent working on the game. I just, I just do not understand the argument that this game is going to be interesting to almost anyone. I, I, I just unless they really turn a corner with it and really have something compelling to show in terms of its functionality, this isn't Little Big Planet and it's way harder to wrap your mind around the Little Big Planet and um it's been in development for so fucking long and I just feel like it's gonna come out and bomb. I mean that's that's 
that's my feeling on it. I, I hope I'm wrong because when you when you also think about the big exclusives coming up, it just never comes up. We yeah, talk about 100%. Uh, Days Gone, God of War, Horizon, Detroit, etc. And we then, talk like, more when about dreams ever we talk coming? about it, we and other people talk more about sucker punches unannounced. We don't even know what the fuck it is game more than dreams because yeah, dreams is so. It's fog. You're trying to grab at it and understand what it is, and you don't, and you can't. And it's cool tech, but is that going to translate to a cool game? It's but a dream. But a dream. And, and I think that's, I mean, is it in, I, first off, I don't think that there's going to be a beta in 2016. Don't hold your breath. There is that chance, I guess, of PSX are like, and guess what? The beta starts now. You can get into it right now or go sign up at Dreams and it'll be available later. I big, don't see that happening. Little Big Planet 2 was 2011, or was it 2010? Somewhere in there, 2010 or 2011. Then they made Tear Away. When was Dead Space 2? Because it was the same time as that. Oh, God, I don't even remember. It doesn't matter. The point is, is that by the time dreams, 2010. by the time dreams come out, it's something like seven years since they put out a game on console. I know, I know they put tear away on console, and it's not tear away on. I mean, all right, enough with the marketing. Tear away folder. Um, that was a doubling down on a game that people didn't really want to play, and I respect yeah. their artsiness and I respect their talent. Their talent, exactly. But I just feel like they got to make a game. You know, 100%. like I, I, I just don't understand. I just don't understand what I think doing. the reaction think that, that we've had to it and that the industry at large and then even the audience has had to it is one of the reasons they are dark on it because I think they whether it's Media Molecule or Sony talking to them that th when we talk about this game next time we have to explain what the fuck is happening in it and what the game is and who the character is and what the story is and all these different things and then okay and you can build your own too and you can use it to do whatever you want to because that's right now that's how they came out of the gate and that's really hard to explain around it. Yeah and I, it's funny because <laughs> The move controller, like there's going to be VR, I'm sure, in it and, and, and shit like that, but because they're, they're weird and they're going to do weird and they're going to push themselves and they're going to do that. But it's funny. We talked about the Order 1886 earlier in the show, and, and I think there's a there's a there's a correlation between these two games. When you focus too much on one aspect of the game and forget that there's a game to be played, your game suffers. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that happened, obviously, with the Order 1886, with its, its emphasis on its technical kind of fidelity. And with Dreams, there's an emphasis on the creation tools and the weirdness of the game, because that's what Media Molecule is. And it's almost as if, you know, when we saw them at GDC, they're like, the tools are done, now we're going to make the campaign. And I'm like, but guys, like that's what they're going to fucking play. You know, a lot of these people are not like dreams is going to sell millions of copies so people can make their own games. It sounds tedious as hell. I'm sorry. And I just don't feel like a lot of people, you know, I don't feel like everyone that bought little big planet did that. I feel like a minority of people that bought little big planet made anything, you know? So yeah. I just, I'm just confused about what they're doing. And I feel like, you know, I feel like it's not going to happen, but I feel like there must've been a time when the, 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 there was a chance that this game was going to have its plug pulled, you know, because I just feel like, um, Sony's not being very good about shitting or getting off the pot with a lot of these exclusives. Right. And they really, really need to get it under control. Um, but I also think they're wise in that sense to keep dreams dark and to really see where they're going. And God, if it doesn't come out next year, man, I mean, the, you're, you're starting to get into like scary territory at that point where it's like, wow, this game's been in development for a long time. Yep. So we'll see what happens. I wish them the very best. I love them. I mean, God, when I was in at Gamescom last time, I went out to dinner with some of them. And they were great people. Um, but I just, I just fear, you know, it seems like they need to be guided and like shepherded in a certain direction. There's nothing wrong with making a game. It doesn't have to be, you know what I mean? Like, no, I, I want new no, things. No, I want no, different I things, but like, it's what you, you are have to have some you, sort of familiarity. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the whole thing of like, it doesn't dreams. gets me excited because it's media molecule and I know what they're capable of and what, how, uh, clever, quirky, interesting, beautiful their games are, right? But when they come out and just talk about building levels, I'm like, great, like I wasn't good at that in Little Big Planet, and this looks way more complex than that, and I don't I'm God, never gonna make anything. Way more complicated. I'm never gonna make anything in here. Yeah. So they have a lot to figure out and I feel like it's maybe an example of biting off more than you can chew. You know? I mean remember that we saw this game at the PlayStation 4 reveal. So we have a question now that depending on who you talk to might tie into what we just talked about with dreams. Seinfeld and 24. It says, hey, Colin and Greg. I've been a fan since Beyond 125, so I have had the pleasure of following both careers for a long time. I remember the impact your reaction had on and, and then ended up changing Colin Infamous 2. Ultimately, I believe your vocal outcry changed the studio's direction and brought it more in line with your expectations. My question is, do you think since leaving IGN that you guys are as influential, more influential, or less influential towards impacting change in the industry. Personally, I think you are more influential since your audience has grown, i.e. helping keep the Vita alive through your advocacy. Andrew Jelly, Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Honestly, I think at best we're as influential. Um, I, I think agree. at worst we're not as influential. 
Yeah. I don't I, think that there's any world in which we left the biggest website, gaming website in the world and became more influential. I, yeah. I, I think that we're probably as influential with a different group of people. And I think we have a very hardcore audience. I think we, I think we absolutely, I don't, I don't think that in any stretch of imagination we make or break games or, or they sink or swim based on us, mm -hmm. but we certainly drive lots and lots of people towards games we like. And I think everyone knows that. So, and that's what it comes down to. And I'm yeah. not saying everyone at the audience, I'm saying publishers and developers know that hundred percent. Um, so I, but I don't do this for my own influence. I do it cause it's fun. So I don't give a flying fuck if I have any influence or not, but I, but I, you know, um, Guacamelee was controllable on a D-pad because of me, mm -hmm. you know, Cole got changed because of you mm -hmm. and you were the first person to see the redesign Cole, the re redesign Cole. Yeah. Yeah. They should. And um, so we've definitely tangibly changed things and have been used in the past. I don't mean used in a negative way, but used in the past to be like, what do you guys think of this before we mm -hmm. do anything with it? Um, and we've definitely changed and tweaked things based on our feedback in the past. And that is really quite cool. Like I noticed in Axiom Verge that I was in the credits for that. I didn't do anything other than just, I really liked it. So I talked a lot about it and they yeah. appreciated that and that helped them. Um, you figure out, and, and, and I don't mean to be like a dick about it, but I made Taco Master chart that month, mm -hmm. right? That it came out. And so the, the, the question is fascinating. I agree with Carl's assessment, but I think the real question has to be asked to you, the audience, what you think of it. Cause what we've never known really what our power or influence or whatever the hell it is. You know what I mean? Uh, I agree with you that if it, at, I think we're probably the same is what I would honestly say. And I think it's because our influence only goes as far as you, the audience allows it to go, let alone it only influences the people who are dialed in enough to the community. They're making games for to understand and care, right? Like, yeah, we freaked out about coal and that was a big thing. And then yeah, taco master. Sure. Axiom verge. Sure. It's because those people are so in love with their games and so in love with the creation. So, invested in their project that when you guys tweet at them and say like what's happening right now with overcooked where I get tweets all the time of like, thank you, Greg, for talking about Overcooked. They include you every so often too because of your Aaron conversations. <laughs> thank you guys for talking about Overcooked, right? Like I am, you know, doing it because of you. Oceanhorn. Oceanhorn, when I was talking about Oceanhorn that first week it came out, everybody's tweeting at me and including the developer. They see that. They know that. That's when the Vita stuff starts happening. Like it happens because we command in a, a, a very, very dedicated community of best friends that is by far not the biggest internet community, right? But it is the same thing that'll help me win trending gamer of the year over PewDiePie because you guys are so into us and like us and hang out with us and are our best friends and interact with us on that level that you'll go out and be helpful. You'll be positive. You'll ha start your own hashtag of PS. I love you. XOX or ha I'm sorry. PS. We love you. XOXO and sing. You guys do that all by yourselves. You single out a developer. You single out a press person every week to tell, Hey, you're awesome. And we love your work. And the, um, like, that's the influence. That's the power of kind of funny. And that's what, whenever I do an event, whenever I see a pr uh, press person or a developer for the first time, they talk about how awesome what we're doing is because of you, because of how you guys interact with them, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think I talked about this recently with someone where there are definitely back end things that have changed based on our feedback. But in terms of like the final product and the event, like the evangelizing of a product that we like, um, there are certainly games that have benefited from that. Um, like Nino Cooney is a massive one that I identified very early and I'm mm -hmm. super proud of that. Catherine, obviously, um, dragon's crown, et cetera, and so on. But the thing is, is that those games were awesome with or without me. And if it wasn't for me banging the drum, someone else would have banged the drum. Exactly. And so I, so I, I never sit and like look in the mirror and be like, you fucking yeah. really helped Catherine sell or something like that because you really liked it. I'm like, no, I just really liked Catherine. I had a platform to tell people Catherine was awesome. Right. Someone else would have told them Catherine was awesome. I don't think it would have materially changed anything. I so mean, I never the, really take my own, my own influence very well, that's, seriously. And the, I mean, the, op, the op, not the opposite, but I think the influence side of that, the opposite way is Rocket League, right? Where you saw Rocket League and you came and told our audience Rocket League was awesome, but then as soon as Rocket League got into everybody else's hands, that's when it went wildfire. Oh yeah, right? it was that a Colin was right example to the max, yeah. but it was so obvious exactly. that it only took a Daniel Dwyer to start evangelizing or someone else and, and suddenly everyone realized that it wasn't. So so there are games that are hit and misses and, and so yeah, I think Spec Ops The Line probably sold more copies because of me, I think, but like how many more? You yeah, know, yeah. and like, and I don't care about any of that. What I care about is does the audience trust us mm -hmm. to tell them when something's good or bad from our hearts because it's really a subjective sort of thing anyway. So I think Spec Ops The Line is brilliant. There are people that are going to play it and there are people that I'm sure have played it on my recommendation that didn't like it. That's kind of the hit or miss nature of it. But you can trust that I'm telling you the truth. I never have a, a horse in the race. I don't own stock in these companies. I don't really give a flying fuck how well Nino Cooney sells, you know, except for the fact that we're getting a sequel. 
And when I think back and back and back, and, and Namco Bandai op offered me that early build of the game, and I'm sure other people got it too, and everyone ignored it, but I put it in and I played it. So I was just the first to tell you. Yeah. You know? But again, once you realized it, that thing spread like wildfire through word of mouth, not because of me. So I take honor in any part I play in the, in the success of a game. And unfortunately, we also have parts, I'm sure, as small as they are to play in the failures of games as well. Sure. But, um, and that's just the kind of natural equilibrium, equilibrium that you kind of strike in something like this. But again, that doesn't matter to me. I just want people to trust what we say and, and know that it comes from the heart. So when we tell you a game's good or we, a game, we, we like a game, um, you know that it's not because we're sponsored by them. Because if we're sponsored by something, you would know. And then you should take it with a grain of salt, which is why for, when I talk about Bloodstain, for instance, I'm like, well, I'm friends with Ega. You know, like yeah. we have team fat shit in the game. You know, like you should know that it's going to be great. But we thought Mighty Number no. Nine was going to be great too. So did we? No. We okay, didn't. just making sure. Um, so a game so bad that I refuse to finish it. So uh, like I literally I took it out of my my PS4 and I was like, we're done. Never playing this Never again. Never again. So we appreciate that you guys trust us, and that's what's important. It's not the influence. And that's and that yeah and that yeah exactly. Influence. It all comes back to it. Colin, are you ready to meet your best friend? Yes. This is PS. I love this best friend, XOXO. It's where one of you beautiful people goes over to kindoffunny.com slash forums, puts your PSN name into the PS. I love this best friend list. We read it on the show. You get friend requests from the other best friends and messages of love and support. This one comes from Ruben. That's not his PSN name. Greetings from Canada. I've been a big fan of Farming Simulator for a few years now. Parentheses. Thanks, Greg and Tim, for your timeless Let's Play of Farm Sim 15. Dedicating hours to putting together a massive thread on the forums for the newest installment, but have yet to find any PSN friends to try the multiplayer aspect with. With Farming Simulator 17 coming out on October 25th, the day PS I Love You XOXO will post, I will be forever grateful if you guys could help me find some best friends to farm with. My PSN name is Black. Blackie Moo, B L A C K I E M O O. Thanks, guys. Ruben. Everybody, if you want to farm, send Ruben, aka Blackie Moo, some love. And if you just want to say, hey, maybe play different games with me, you can do that as well. We actually have a forgotten PlayStation game this week. Uh, this week's forgotten PlayStation game comes from True Apple J over on the Kind of Funny forums. He says, hey, Colin and Greg. My forgotten PlayStation game is Champions of Norath, mm. coupled with its sequel, Return to Arms. With EverQuest next getting canned earlier this year, I think it's I, I think it's fair to pay a little homage to two of the best dungeon crawlers in the PS2 era. These two games, along with Baldur's Gate, Dark Alliance, and its sequel, made for some of the best gaming experiences I've ever had. PS2 classics, where you at? R.I.P. EverQuest. What do you think of that one? That's a that's a fine one. I'm not my kind of game. Yeah, I mean, I was never into them. I only got into the light versions of those games, like Gauntlet on N64, yeah, for instance, yeah, yeah, yeah. was a fucking really good game. But I typically that that's like a that's like dungeon crawler light, baby, baby, like mixed with an arcade game. Really, I don't typically get into those kinds of games. I remember them and I respect your decision. Good. Is Warriors that a forgotten Lair. PlayStation gem? I don't know about Warriors that. Lair would have been on there too. Uh, PSN's worst name of the week this week comes from I Nom Nom Awesome. It's a walk, but stick with me. Hey guys, I've been listening to you for years, but this is my first time writing in. My current PSN name is I Nom Nom Awesome, but that's not the name I'm submitting. Neither am I submitting my previous PSN account that got banned for the name of Eat You Are Crap. Eat Your Crap. Bear with me here, but the actual names I want to submit are the names I used to use on Xbox 360. Every time someone reported me for the inappropriate name, Xbox made me change my name. I went through nearly 20 names before they permanently banned me. Examples of my banned names include Eat, You Are Crap. Drink, You Are Piss. Don't Lick Me There. Scrotum Hair, FTW. Yum, Scrotum Hair. Scrotum Bumps, FTW. Twist My Titties. I Tangled My Balls. I Tongue Juicy Vag. I Tongue Titties. I Have Great Balls. My Pink, Your Ass. Parentheses. This name got me reported and I had to change it in less than an hour. End parentheses. My Pee Pee, Your Ass. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, at least Xbox gave me plenty of chances to change my evil ways. I never learned. I've always wanted to submit for this segment, so hopefully being on Xbox doesn't disqualify me. P.S. To demonstrate my current PlayStation devotion, I have 38 Platinums. I nom nom awesome. Shuhei, let these people change their names. I nom nom awesome will not be stopped. And you could have made a lot of money if you charged them every time, like these Xbox 360 people did. It's got to be close, right? we got to be close to this now. The change? You think it's PSX yeah, this year? I don't know. 
I don't want to get my hopes they up They have anymore. to have... Well, I'm so they, fucking tired of this all shit. All we do is get our hopes up. And it's so ridiculous. Just let us change our fucking names. It is literally 10 years since PS3 came out. Yeah. It's time. I guess so. But maybe it's just a lesson. What you do matters it's with so your dumb. life. It's such a dumb fucking excuse. Uh, Jericho, century. who, by the way, I've, I've, it's coming to my attention just in the fact that I work with Jericho every week. I don't give him enough props in the show. Of course, Jericho compiles your questions over on the PS I Love You forum, and he is the one who then goes through, listens to the show early, and makes a nice uh, forum thread every time. So thank you, Jericho. Uh, if you remember, uh, we were doing the whole vote over there on the forums for the worst PlayStation name of the year, taking all the ones from the 52 episodes, compiling them in, then going and doing like round robin bracket kind of thing, tournament to come down to the final four. Jericho writes in and says, he says it in German, but he basically says, Mr. Miller and Mr. Moriarty. Today is the day. The kind of funny best friends have chosen the finalists of the best worst PlayStation Network name of the year, year one. I imagine the fanfare in the background while these words are being spoken. 60 style. Think of Fallout's, Fallout Boy's, or Fallout's Pip Boy instruction videos. In the grand finale, we come together to pick one of the following names and crown it the winner of this title. The first title. So, from episode 13, your first finalist is not gay, but $5 is $5. From episode 17, your second nominee is come honor chest underscore honor. Like for honor. Come honor chest underscore. Episode 34. Don't shoot. I'm gay. Episode 48 and 50. Anime tit lover. <laughs> I ask you all of my best friends out there to go to the forums. Open the thread of this week's episode and click on the link to the big election, which is way more important than any other election in the world. Parentheses. The joke is real and vote. Vote or die as they say or join or die as Colin Tattoo says. Uh, what I will do is put the Google forum link the Google form link, I should say, into uh, this week's description on YouTube so you can get it there too. Or you could go it's a tough decision to kindoffunny.com slash forums and jump in there. I have my pick, but I'm not going to say it. I don't want to skew the results. I've done that before where I made, I made sure my extra life t-shirt that I wanted to win happened. Sure. So I won't do that here. Sure. But I will tell you that the worst PSN name of the week is brought to you by Movement Watches. At PSI Love You XOXO, we teamed up with brands that are, tr- or we team up with brands that are trying to do something new. We love innovation and companies that are changing the industries they're in. So when movement, inter- when movement introduced themselves and sent over some watches, pow, we were really impressed. Now I'm supposed to wear this watch, Colin. Well, I'm not supposed to. I wear the watch, but I wear it when I'm in my suit. I'm not just going to wear it around, right? It's the black on black one. I like it. It's got the red stuff. What do you got for me, Kev? Thank you, Kev. Look at you being a, a jaw. 141. I like now you got a watch too, right? Yes. You like it? Yes. Pretty? I like the 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 watch, the band I want to kind of change to be honest. You can do that I bet with movement watches. It's apparently the case. You, you, That's not even a setup. No, no, not at all. No. Uh, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, a little bit about movement watches. The company started out with two broke college kids that wanted to wear stylish watches but couldn't afford them. They did some research and found out that big watch brands were passing huge retailer markups onto the consumer. Movement decided that by selling online, they were able to cut out the middleman and provide the best possible price. Movement watches started just $95. At the department store, you're looking at 400 to 500 bucks. Movement has grown organically purely by supporters like you. So join there are more than 1 million social media followers and get a movement watch today. Go to MVMTwatches.com and use the promo code XOXO and they'll give you 15% off your entire purchase. Again, MVMTwatches.com. Use the promo code XOXO. What do you got for me? Can you hear the C? This leather smells like my hockey equipment, but not like worn hockey equipment, like new hockey equipment. It brought me back. You know how sm- smells so intimately tied to memory? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Brought me right back to the hockey arena. I'm back there in Missouri. Staying like hockey tape, actually. Yeah. with my friend Ashley. She was a Mizzou softball player. No big deal. Her husband, baseball player. No big deal. They, so you know these kids are coming out. They're going to be playing, drafted. They're going to be playing all kinds of sports now. They're going to be playing all sorts of crazy kind of sports, right? Last time I was there, of course. Because baseball drafts everyone. That's they're why I'm big, just I understand. No, they're big, in, they're, they're big in the baseball. They're playing the soccer. They're doing this. The, uh, Gibson now taking up hockey. He's taking up the hockey. They got to drive him down to Jeff City so he can get on the ice out there. She didn't know that sh- skates needed to be sharpened because nobody in Missouri plays hockey. So he was really? out there. With no one in Missouri the, plays hockey? Yeah, yeah. Well, at least in Columbia, I guess. But th- it's out there now. He's out there now. He's playing. He's what does he play? He, what's, what's the position? He's, I, he's, a, he's what, six, seven? He's not, they're not playing anything. Okay, I was playing in a travel team he's by the time I was seven, around. so I'm not fucking impressed. Do you understand what I'm saying? Again, though, I mean, do you understand that they're trying to bring hockey to a place in the country that doesn't do it? So, I mean, just give them a second here. You know what I mean? This is very much like when the government took the natives and let them watch the bomb be dropped on their own home. They gave them a little beer, a little tiki <laughs> Here we go, glass. guys. Like, oh, man, is this going to be cool? I don't know. Just watch their entire life obliterated in a nuclear <laughs> <What> furnace. <flash? laughs> 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been PSI Love You XOXO episode 58. Remember, this is kindoffunny.com's PlayStation podcast. So keep the mics on. Go to kindoffunny.com. Look at all the other videos. Listen to all the other podcasts. Subscribe to the YouTube channels. Rate us on iTunes. Rate us on Google Play or wherever the hell you get it. If you get a weird bug on iTunes through the podcast app that says this episode's unavailable, apparently that is a known bug with the podcast app. We don't know what we can do with it on our end. It doesn't seem like much. You restart the app. You update your iOS. It works. It worked for me. Yesterday. I've gotten it too. It's annoying. It's an iOS thing. We're looking into it. I don't want to hear about Google. I don't want to hear about what they do. Thank you, Kevin. Remember, you can get it at SoundCloud too if you wanted to get it that way. No, Kevin, I said I don't want to hear about it. Episodes post every Tuesday, 9 a.m. YouTube and podcast services around the globe. Every episode of PSI Love You XOXO ends in a song in a segment we call Sing in a Shoe Hey. This is where one of you talented motherfuckers goes to kindoffunny.com slash PSM and submits a song you created. Remember, I need an MP3 link to put at the end of our MP3 and a YouTube link so I can annotate at the end of our YouTube video to you. This one comes from Skizip. Skizip, he spelled it out. And even then it looks wrong. It sounds wrong. You know what I mean? But Skizip says... Greetings and salutations, Colin, Greg, and all the best friends, and even Big Kev Dog. My name is Jamie, but I go by Skizip. He put, and then he put in parentheses, pronounced Skizip, and then another parentheses. It's something from a movie called Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Or a variation of everywhere but the real world. I don't know. He's going back to Skizip again. Uh, I've been making music by myself at home for the past several years and put several finished projects up online as well as editing a few videos together. The coolest thing that has come out of that was being able to see my analytics on SoundCloud of how many people have listened to my music, not that many, and seeing where in the world they are. That statement alone still blows my mind. Where in the world they are? I may be young at 26, but I remember a time growing up where I personally couldn't connect with anyone in the world at will. To know that I, a real live human being somewhere out there in the world, actually listened to something I created and maybe even liked it blew my mind. I'm sure you guys can relate with this awesome community you have built. I'm very happy for you guys and thank you for all the hard work, dedication, and risk taking risk taking for the benefit of all of us. Long story short, you guys inspire me. I've only uh, been a real avid fan for the past year and some change, but Oh, year and some change. But the amount of joy you guys bring to me is the best. Friends can like you cannot be quantified. I listen to every episode of PS. I love you. XO XO. And at the very end of every episode, I always think to myself that I really should try to get one of my songs on there. So here it is. This is a song I made almost three years ago when I was 23. The project it is called is songs about 23. And I worked on it the whole year of my life. It isn't very polished and it isn't extremely conventional, but it represents me and where I was at that time. So this is Skizip. The song is Mira, the album, Songs About 23. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. Sure.